Good evening, John. McDougall. Hey, Wayne. How are you? I don't see you. I'm good. You don't see me? Oh, no, I see your name now. I don't I'm see coming. anything, though. How are things? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, now, why don't you see, my, see me there? Hey, Kevin. Thank you. The... Thank you John. Oh, there you are, Wayne. Good. Share content participants. Melissa, can you turn your mic on, please? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So is uh, I'm not uh, seeing Brad, Brad Dirksen. So I, I'll see he's presenting the application for two bears, is he not? Correct. He's doing it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, did you see the communication from member Panis McIntyre? Okay. It will be a few minutes late. It could be a few minutes late, okay. Thank you.
was looking for committee members. I'm only seeing John McDougall so far. Bev coming in. Mr. Dirksen is also present. I see, yeah, okay, thank you. See Robert, John Barr coming on. Robert Kotowski coming on, John Barr. Once we have Mr. Pearson, um, Ms. McIntosh would just be a little bit. Good evening, Robert. Hello, Wayne. How are you tonight? I'm good, thank you. Good evening, John Barr. Hi there, how are you? Good, just wanna make sure your sound's good. Good evening, Bev. No problem. Good evening, Bev. Hello. Okay, I'm looking, no, I'm I'm getting Beth, but I'm not getting a Bev. Bev Richards? No. I'm dying out here. Okay. Mr. Pearson's present. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Ray. I still just need acknowledgement from Bev Richards. Hey, I'm, I'm, can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah. Can you not see me? Um, but I'm only seeing half your face. Half my face, well, that's yeah. weird. Okay, I'm all here. All um, I'll try, I've, I've been on for about 10 minutes, but maybe it's the corner of the house. Maybe I better switch positions or switch uh, rooms, maybe. Okay, like I say, we're try only it again. seeing part of your face. Which okay. part? <laughs> I hope the good part, <laughs> is there a good part? Okay. Is that better? That's good. Yeah. That's better. Better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, you're fine. I better go upstairs. So, Melissa, we'll need to wait for Tannis. Like, we can go through the preamble. Correct. I would start with the preamble. And then we will not be able to go. Like she'll have to get into the meeting before what? Before we we'll get either the declare a conflict on the first agenda item if she's not present by the time that you commence. Um, otherwise, we can take a moment to see if she'll arrive. Okay. I will communicate with her now to see how long she might be. Okay, she basically has to get in when we do the application for a minor variance. And uh, I just want to, Brad Dirksen, Brad, are you, you're presenting the applications for two bears tonight? Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but I am present to answer some questions or try to be as much help as I can. All right. So you don't have a presentation for the application. Do you want us to go directly to the planner? I would uh, appreciate that, please. Janine is not available, I do not believe, so I'm, uh, I'm present. Okay, so you're here to answer questions, but uh, not, you're not gonna present the application? I am not. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, I have six o'clock and we're ready to proceed. This is a planning advisory committee meeting for July 20th, 2021. As we get, and all the preamble, we'll do the preamble first. As we gather, we recognize that we are on treaty three lands, which are steeped in rich indigenous history and home to many First Nations and Métis people today. We continue to be thankful for the partnerships with our indigenous people. This is a hearing of the Kenora Planning Advisory Committee and Committee of Adjustments for the City of Kenora. The committee members have been appointed by council to consider applications for minor variances, consents, plans of subdivisions, and condominium descriptions within the jurisdiction of the Planning Act. The applicants or the agents will be given an opportunity to speak on behalf of their submissions and to respond to questions arising from discussion of these applications. Interested members of the public will be given an opportunity to speak in favor of or opposition to the application being dealt with at these hearings. Prior to calling the meeting to order, please ensure your microphone is on mute. Should you be joining the meeting with video, please be mindful of what is visible to the public in your surroundings. Be respectful of others throughout the meeting. If at any time you wish to leave the meeting, you are free to do so by simply clicking on end call at the bottom of your screen. If you are on a landline, you may hang up at any time. However, please do not interrupt the meeting to inform your dismissal. Please note the meeting is being recorded and by continuing to be in the meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. Tap leave meeting to opt out and exit the session. When it is time for public comments, I will address the participants by the name that was used to register for this virtual PAC meeting. Once your name has been called, please then unmute your microphone or your telephone. All persons addressing the committee shall state their full name and mailing address and must direct their questions comments through myself, the chair. Decisions will be mailed or emailed to the applicant, agents, and to all other interested parties who have provided their mailing address and our email address to the secretary treasurer at mshaw at kenora.ca. Also a notice of adjourned application or possible local planning appeal tribunal hearing will also be provided to those that have made a written request form via email to the secretary treasurer at mshaw at kenora.ca. The decision and or any condition imposed by the committee can be appealed to the Ontario Land Tribunal. The notice of appeal for a minor variance application must be filed with the secretary treasurer within 20 days of the making of the decision. The notice of appeal for a land division application must be filed with the secretary treasurer within 20 days of the mailing of the notice. The Secretary Treasurer for the Kenora Planning Advisory Committee is Melissa Shaw. The City Planner is Kevin Sumner. The Manager of Development Services is Adam Smith. And the Minute Taker is Tess Sabisky. I'll call the meeting to order and I'll ask if there's any additions to the agenda. I have none. There are none. Declaration of interest by a member for this meeting or at a meeting in which a member was not present. Seeing none, we'll move to the minutes of the previous meeting of June 15, 2021. And these will be amended minutes. Um, John, you amended, where's John? John, you've amended minutes uh, previous to the meeting. Did everybody see that? Okay, everybody seen it? Anybody else? Any questions or amendments to the minutes? Okay, the amended minutes are approved. We'll ask if there's any additional correspondence relating to applications before the committee this evening. I have four, Mr. Chair, and I'll briefly outline those for you now. We did have a late submission, a comment in support of minor variance application D13-2109, an application for permission D13-2110. Those were circulated to planning advisory committee later in the day. They will not, it will not be read into the meeting here this evening, but will form part of the public record. With respect to application for consent, D102105, Holly on Carlton Road, Northwestern Health Unit has provided a comment of no objection to the severance. With respect to file D102106, an application for consent at 181 Villanova Road, TC Energy has requested that the new lot contain a warning clause to advise the future landowners 
of, of a following statement and that has been that has formed a condition of approval which has been circulated to the planning advisory committee as well as the agent on file and i received no comment of concern application for zoning bylaw amendment d142106 2 we received a comment from hydro one that there are no concerns okay thank you so we'll move forward with consideration of an application for minor variance so at this point tanis has not entered the meeting so she will be okay. Thank you. So uh, consideration of an application for minor variance, and we'll start with, keep in mind also that these are two separate applications. D132109 is the first one, which uh, is two bears, and we're going to go directly to Kevin for the planning report. Yes, uh, thank you. So uh, we have uh, in uh, D14, uh, or D13, sorry, 2109, uh, an application for minor variance uh, pertaining to three address, three properties uh, addressed at 105 Bay Street, 510 Front Street, and a property with no assigned address that's identified as the right of way and station grounds of Canadian Pacific Railway, uh, Kenora, Ontario. So the, the application has been received for variance to the zoning bylaw number 101-2015 for those properties. The applicant, uh, Two Bears Marina, uh, uh, or CP Rail operates the, the property on the, or owns the property on the, <coughs> excuse me, the north side of the, of the bay. Uh, Two Bears Marina owns the properties on the south side of the bay, the Bay Street and Front Street properties. And, uh, Bear, and Two Bears Marina is the applicant for all three properties. And the effect of the approval uh, would be to allow for associated parking spaces to be located up to 410 meters from the main entrance of the subject properties. So uh, the applicant here has expanded existing marina docking on the property owned by uh, Canadian Pacific Railway without obtaining permits or planning approvals from the city. To bring the property into compliance with the zoning bylaw, one parking space per boat slip plus any required parking spaces required for associated use, uses must be provided on the subject uh, properties. In commercial zones, and we'll circle back to this uh, later in my report, uh, parking spaces may be supplied offsite within 90 meters of the main pedestrian access to the building structure or use for which the parking spaces are required, provided the site plan agreement is registered on the title of the lands used for parking, which commits the parking spaces to the related commercial use. And just a side note, the uh, properties in question will be subject to, are subject to site plan control approval, which is a separate, uh, process uh, which will uh, result in a site plan agreement and that site plan agreement uh, we're anticipating bringing uh, forward to council uh, most likely at this point at the september council meeting uh, but the, that's we're still a few steps away from the, the in the site plan control process so there are a number of balls in the air in terms of the uh, what's being uh, the approvals that are required for uh, all these properties uh, the applicant uh, currently leases a small area of land from the city of Kenora at 80 Government Road and is proposing to locate a portion of the required parking at that property uh, within 410 meters of the entrance of the building at 105 Bay Street uh, and the new marina on the CPR property. In terms of existing conditions, uh, the properties on which Two Bears Marina operates are located uh, on the north and south shores of Portage Bay. Uh, Two Bears Marina's main location is at 510 Bay Street and they also own the adjacent property at 105 Front Street. Two Bears docks are also located on the north side of the bay as can be seen in the image in the report. Uh, the main marina building is serviced with municipal sewer and water. There are currently approximately 10 parking spaces fully on Two Bears property at the main marina building with an additional 10 spaces on the Bay Street right of way. And the applicants claim to have 149 existing parking stalls on the property on the north side of the bay. Uh, the applicants also leases the western portion of the main structure and a small outdoor storage space from the city of Kenora at 80 Government Road. In 2021, the applicant has expanded parking and storage at the 80 Government Road to include a large area of the property that is not included in their lease. Uh, so uh, they're, they're currently in contravention of the current lease. Uh, so a new lease is another uh, 
item that's uh, part of this, uh, get, bringing everything to compliance, uh, which is, a, a, again, separate from uh, the purview of the Planning Advisory Committee and something that's being uh, negotiated separately. Uh, so there are some images of the report of the properties in my uh, report, which I've included for the interest of the Planning Advisory Committee. And I have to apologize. One of the images did get uh, dropped somehow uh, when the, from the version that got uploaded, which uh, showed the parking location on Bay Street. But I'm sure uh, the committee members have taken an opportunity to uh, drive by there and, and take a look at uh, the current situation, uh, especially with how busy Q8 is uh, these days. So uh, moving on to consistency with legislated policy and city directives. Uh, in regards to the provincial policy statement 2020, uh, the proposed minor variance is generally consistent with policies encouraging land use patterns within settlement areas based on a mix of land uses which efficiently use land and resources are appropriate for and efficiently use available infrastructure and public service facilities. Planning authorities are also to promote economic development and competitiveness by providing opportunities for a diversified economic base. In terms of the City of Kenora's official plan 2015, the land use designations on the sub of the property on the south side of Portage Bay is established area while the property on the north side of Portage Bay is des designated as industrial development area. Policy 4.1 of the plan states the established area includes residential, commercial, existing industrial and institutional uses that presently exist in the city and that the designation of lands as established area indicates that there will be little change in those areas over the lifetime of the plan. Policy 4.5 of the plan states that industrial development areas uh, is intended to identify employment areas where major industry and related enterprises are encouraged to locate in the city. Adjacent properties on both sides of Portage Bay are mostly designated as established area, uh, except parks located on the opposite side of Bay Street and along Boatlift Road and McLean Avenue that are designated as open space. Section 3.6 of the official plan sets out policies relating to development and proximity to rail lines and rail yards. It states in part that new development proposed on land adjacent to existing transportation corridors shall avoid, mitigate, or minimize negative impacts on and from the corridor and transportation facilities. Appropriate safety measure, measures such as setbacks, berms, and security fencing shall be provided in association with all development proposals adjacent to rail yards or railway corridors to the satisfaction of the city in consultation with the rail companies. And I include the, that policy uh, because of the proximity of the, the rail lines to uh, 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 the properties on the north side of the bay. In regards to zoning bylaw number 101-2015, the subject properties on the south side of Portage Bay are zoned TR, Tourist Recreation Zone, uh, that being at 105 Bay Street, and the property at uh, on Front Street is zoned R1, Residential First Density. The TR zone allows for a variety of accommodations to be established for recreational and tourism purposes. The R1 allows, zone allows for the development of zone, single detached housing and other compatible uses serviced by municipal water and sewer or with municipal water only. The subject property on the north side of Portage Bay is zoned MH, heavy industrial zone, and HL, hazard land zone. Uh, the MH zone allows for a wide range of industrial uses which by their nature may generate noise, fumes, odor, and that may be obnoxious or hazardous. Some limited commercial and service oriented uses are also permitted. A marina is not a permitted use in the MH zone and the existing docks are considered a legally non-conforming use. The HL zone identifies lands which are susceptible to flooding or erosion or any other physical characteristic which could cause harm to persons or lead to the deterioration of buildings and structures. Docks and parking lots are permitted in the HL zone, uh, but section 3.20 of the zoning bylaw states that where two or more zoning provisions are equally applicable, the more restrictive, in this case, the MH provisions must be complied with. Within any commercial zone, the required parking spaces may be supplied offsite within 90, 90 meters of the main pedestrian access to the building structure or use for which the parking spaces are required, provided the site plan agreement is registered on the title to the lands used for parking, which commits the parking spaces and the related uh, commercial site. Uh, and that's in section 3.23.8 of the zoning bylaw. While the uses of the properties are commercial in nature, 
the TR, R1, and IN zones are not considered to be commercial zones. In the planning review of the application, it has been determined that the applicants require, require relief not only from the maximum distance allowed for the supply of off-site parking as anticipated in the application submitted, but also to allow off-site parking for uses in the TR, R1, and IN zones to achieve the intent of the application. Uh, moving now to uh, results of interdepartmental and agency circulation. Uh, so the, the application was circulated uh, for comment on the 24th of June, along with the concurrent application for permission to expand a non-complying use. Uh, so those were circulated concurrently and, the, uh, and we received one set of comments in regards to both applications. So you will see the same comments in regards to this file and to the next one, uh, which comes up tonight. So the city of Kenora's building department uh, noted, it should be noted that in addition to the non-approved 72 boat slips, there's also a non-approved barging operation complete with dock slips uh, and a picture has been provided. And relevant to two bears parking issues is the legal non-complying use of the marina, uh, which is shown in the, also in pictures in the comments. And non-conforming uses are meant to disappear sooner or later uh, then the building official feels that this variance will facilitate and perpetuate unnecessarily illegal non-conforming use. Term, uh, from our bylaw enforcement department and uh, via the city clerk, uh, from a bylaw enforcement perspective, we have concerns regarding the Bay Street Front Street proposed parking location. This area is already an excessively challenging area to enforce in terms of parking. We receive regular calls for enforcement in this area on city streets, and there is a great deal of non-compliance. The homeowners in the area, as far as Bay Street on the south side, 10th Street, Main Street, Front Street, and Ottawa Street all have ongoing complaints. Last year, we had to tow a vehicle that parked on Government Road for weeks on a Main Street where no parking was permitted. Uh, the overflow from the marina is already a huge challenge. Once the Q8 and Arena public boat launch lots fill up, cars will then park on the streets with trailers causing even further congestion. The location identified by the applicant already has the maximum number of vehicles that could be parked in that location. It is highly congested with vehicles impeding the street and traffic flows. On most days, two vehicles cannot pass each other from these parked vehicles onto city streets. If overflow parking is being moved to the former Q8 and public works yard, bylaw does not have concerns regarding this. However, it feels it is highly unlikely there won't be issues with the access road to the Winnipeg River launch, where we do have overflow parking up the road at times. To summarize the proposed area for parking expansion on CP lands, where the north side of docking expansion is located, the area is already very tight and the applicant's drawing does not depict the addition of the detail contractor docking and vehicles that are located there. These contractor vehicles come in and out of that location all day long. While bylaw would not enforce anything parking related in this area, we will enforce property standards complaints which have been received in the past in this area. Adding more activity and additional users to this area has potential for future or for further property standards complaints. There is significant congestion in Kuwait and in this area, and if this proposed plan to move people to the Kuwait and Public Works Yard works, this could be positive. However, we do, not, we do have concerns that will not be used as intended and we will continue to see the added congestions on the streets. From our community service, uh, services department comment was the only concern is related to the execution of the lease amendment related to the expansion of the parking spaces at the former Kuwait and Public Works Yard to accommodate the additional parking required. If the lease is executed, community services has no concerns. Engineering department noted that there is no unfettered access to the K-8 and public works yard as one has to cross CP lands to get to it. This location is not a pedestrian friendly area based on the single lane bridge, railroad tracks and road alignment. I can't think of a lot of improvements for pedestrians other than having the proponent replace the white painted crosshatch sidewalk on the east side as per the drawing provided by the engineer. However, this painted crosshatch was originally done by the former town of Kuwait and then provides a visual symbol and does not provide an at-grade portion to the entrance that may be needed to get vehicles with trailers in and out of the parking lot. There isn't much that can be done to get pedestrians across government road as it is not possible to paint a crosswalk in cross proximity paralleling the tracks. In my experience, I don't recommend painting crosswalks unless they are at a controlled intersection like at a stop sign as the pedestrians tend to just walk out in front of traffic 
thinking the vehicle must stop for them. I've also indicated in the drawing the painted crosswalk between the bridge and the tracks has been blocked out as there was a transit bus hit by a train at this location and this crosswalk was implicated in not providing enough clearance between the bridge and the tracks for vehicles to queue when trains are active at the crossing. Uh, the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks uh, noted they had no comments on this. This does not appear to be a situation where a record of site condition would be required. Uh, the Parks and Rec Facilities Division noted the current lease for the old Kuwait and Public Works Yard is for 3,570 square feet of building area, as well as 26,000 square feet of outdoor storage and parking area. When they mapped out the areas as per the current parking being used uh, by the applicants, that area expands to 79,000 square feet. And they include drawings showing the approximate area currently being used uh, versus what's being leased. And all other agencies responded with no objections or concerns. So circulation of the notice of complete application and hearing was completed in accordance with section 45 of the Planning Act where it was circulated to property owners within 60 meters of the subject property and notice of the application was posted on the subject property on July 2nd. Notice was also provided to the persons and public bodies as prescribed. As of the date of the, the this report was on, written on July 13th, planning staff had responded to several inquiries and three email submissions had been received in opposition to the application and the concurrent application for permission. Uh, at, since that time, we've received additional comments that have been and added to the agenda package as they came in. Uh, these submissions are attached to this uh, report or available in the agenda package and express concerns regarding the operations of the marina prior to planning approvals, uh, the state of the Two Bears Marina's docks and associated parking associated activity on Kuwaitan Bay, the impact on wildlife and congestion on the narrow Kuwaitan channel by increasing boat traffic. And I should note that uh, two of the more recent submissions were letters of support from uh, uh, marina users uh, that were added to that uh, uh, to the package, uh, indicating their appreciation for the uh, uh, the docks that they're able to access and rent. In terms of uh, my professional evaluation, uh, section three point fifteen point five of the official plan states that new development shall be assessed on compatibility with the established community and ability to coexist with existing development without causing undue adverse impact on surrounding properties. Subsection 3.15.5G further notes that adequate on-site parking must be provided with minimal impact on adjacent uses. Some concern has been expressed on compliance with official plan section 8.3.1 non-conforming uses and the limited development provision. The most significant factor in limiting expansion on the subject property is the ability to provide adequate parking for the proposed use. The existing parking on Bay Street is not directly impacted by the recent dock expansions, but it seems clear that there are existing challenges to the provision of parking in Kuwaitan that should be considered in granting new planning approvals. As is noted in the comments from bylaw enforcement, the expansion of parking to the former Kuwaitan public yard, works yard does offer some relief for Two Bears customers who previously did not have a convenient off-site parking option other than the streets of Kuwaitan. The expansion of the docks on the north side of Portage Bay is another matter, as they were built not only without permits, but without any apparent forethought to the parking needs of customers. The result has been overflow parking being directed to the former Kuwaitan public works yards to an improvised parking lot located on land, which is not included in their current lease with the city of Kenora. If this minor variance is not approved, the number of dock slips on the north side of Portage Bay would need to be reduced to match the parking available on site. Based on the site plan provided in the rationale, the proposed on site parking could support an additional 19 boat slips, requiring removal of 53 of the unpermitted slips. Fortunately, the applicant has indicated a willingness to rectify the parking situation at the public works yard by entering into a new lease agreement that includes the area now being used for parking and storage. Approval of the minor variance will permit two bears to develop the public works yard as a parking facility in compliance with the zoning regulations and hopefully provide sufficient facilities to prevent any future overflow of customers into the community on the south side of the bridge. The application makes no mention of providing parking for the unpermitted barging operation that has been operating on the CPR property. That operation must be removed from the property to achieve compliance with the zoning bylaw, regardless of whether this minor variance is approved. 
consideration must be given for the significant increase in pedestrian traffic across the rail lines at a level crossing that is, does not appear to have been designed to accommodate such traffic, as noted by the city engineer. Approving this minor variance without improvements to the crossing may increase the risk of accidents at that location due to conflicts between pedestrians, motor vehicles, and railway traffic. The scope of this variance is on the allowable distance for off-site parking. If this application is approved, development will be subject to site plan control. Applications for site plan control approval must include a site plan indicating that the proposed parking areas comply with all parking and other regulations of the zoning bylaw. This includes parking spaces and aisles, size to minimum standards, and separate areas for outdoor storage of boats. In terms of the four tests uh, that are to be applied to any application for minor variance, uh, first of all, in terms of the general intent and purpose of the city's official plan, the proposed land use appears to make efficient use of land and resources and available infrastructure on public surface facilities and helps diversify the community's economic base. In terms of the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw, as per implementation of the official plan, intent of the zoning bylaw is achieved where relief from a regulation may be granted if no negative impacts are anticipated. The proposed development of a parking lot at 80 Government Road offers relief from existing parking congestion in Kiwaton and should not exacerbate any existing negative impacts. Concern regarding increased pedestrian traffic across the rail lines and Government Road may be addressed through a traffic study by an independent traffic engineer and installation of any recommended crossing improvements. In terms of appropriate and desirable development of land, desirable development of land is development that is compatible with established community existing buildings and development, and the provision of existing parking appears to provide a much needed amenity for existing marina users. Providing this minor variance will provide the applicant with the opportunity to legally develop parking to meet current needs. In terms of the proposed variance being minor in nature, uh, the variance as requested is minor in that it proposes to provide all of the required parking spaces for the uses on the site, uh, though at an extended distance. Therefore, it's my recommendation that the Planning Advisory Committee takes into consideration those comments that may yet be received and that the application D13-21-09 to seek relief from the City of Kenora Zoning Bylaw 101-2015 Section 3.23 Parking Provisions to allow for required parking spaces to be supplied off-site within 410 meters of the main pedestrian access of the buildings for which the parking spaces are required for uses in the tourist recreational, residential first density, and heavy industrial zones meets the four tests and should be approved subject to the following conditions. A, that Two Bears Marina Incorporated entered into a lease agreement with the City of Kenora that includes all land at the former Kuwait and Public Works Yard at 80 Government Road being used for parking and storage and B, that Canadian Pacific Railway and or Two Bears Marina engage an independent, an independent traffic engineer to prepare a rail, rail and road crossing study that includes recommendations as to any remedial measures that may be required to ensure pedestrian safety at the government road rail crossing and make any recommended improvements to the satisfaction of the city to ensure pedestrian safety in crossing the road and railway tracks between the marina site and the parking lot at the former Q8 and Public Works Yard. That concludes my report. Thank you, Kevin. Mr. So Chair, Matt, if I may interrupt. Sorry, who's that? It's Melissa. Sorry, who's Mr. Chair, ahead? through you. Just for the minutes, I'd like to confirm that member Tannis McIntosh did enter the meeting prior to any discussions made and has right to participate, to okay. participate and vote. Okay, thank you very much. So Brad, um, I wanna give you an opportunity to, do you have any comments at this time? Is there anything you'd like to add at this time? Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I, I guess that the the uh, there were some you know some wrongs that we're trying to right. The whole intent was to uh, satisfy the docking needs for uh, customers that are, have been Long Lake residents on at, at a different marina uh, that uh, unfortunately shut down and left everybody with uh, with no docking spots and island cottages and residences that they couldn't uh, get to. Uh, I, I really don't, I, I wish Janina was, was, was here. She's unavailable, unfortunately. She did the, uh, the site plan agreement for us and, uh, and the applications uh, that we had provided. But I'm, I'm, open to, 
I'm open to questions. I know there will be some, uh, but that's, uh, I guess that's all I can comment on right now. Okay, thank you. So I'm, I'm going to move to the public and I'm going to give the public an opportunity to speak in favor of or speak against this application. I want to remind the public that you have a maximum of five minutes. I'd like you to do your best not to be terribly repetitious. Um, and again, uh, you need to state your name and your address prior to speaking. So again, I who would like to, I would like to ask if anybody would like to speak in favor of this application. Okay, I, I can't see anybody, so. Uh, I would like to speak in favor. Sorry, I can't find where to raise my hand. Uh, my name is uh, Doug LeBlanc. I uh, own DTL Carpentry, Inc. in Kenora. My mailing address is box 484, <coughs> Kiwi, Ontario, PRX 1CO. So, okay. Yeah, sorry, I just turned it on. Uh, the internet where I am, so if it crashes, I'm sorry. Uh, my only, uh, as Brad mentioned, two bears jumping on the docking is definitely critical to the infrastructure of Kenora as far as like business goes. So I employ, uh, I've been in Kenora now for 10 years. I employ 10 staff full time year round in Kenora. They raise their families here in Kenora and the tourist money that comes in Kenora from cottagers or people who live in the lake is what allows my staff to have a career with benefits, great wages, and basically we take guys right out of high school who can just come and work and be here. We need a venue to operate out of because we work on the lake. Um, in this report I mentioned is uh, an unpermitted barging uh, company, which is actually not true. Uh, I wrote a letter that was I submitted to Melissa and I'm sure it's in the other report you guys had. Uh, our company is an industrial company, I would word it, the way it's zoned. We are an uh, industrial service that also provides a service oriented base. Any of our barges that you see are strictly used for our own company because as well as the docking is short limited in the woods, who is available barging to complete any type of island projects. So to do these projects, we use our own barges so we don't have to try and rent them and they're actually available to us. Um, if any of you guys read the area news, our latest advertising in there completely did, uh, shows you where our barges go and what they're used for. So as far as being uh, an unpermitted barging operation, that is not true. We are just another contractor who needs a dock slip somewhere to uh, rent our space out of, to run our, our business out. So it's no different than people downtown rent a parking spot to park to work at the dentist's office. We rent slips from Two Bears. We're super fortunate to allow us the opportunity to be there. Um, another thing that's happened in Kenora, uh, the m &R Landing used to be usable by contractors. Uh, the city has since closed it to contractor use and we're not allowed to use there either. So with virtually no public access points other than the already congested pier in q um, Two Bears was a rock where we had to go and it became available. So we cleaned it up to bring it to uh, standards so it would look nice and be presentable. Um, I noticed in report two uh, complaints about the, the tidiness of the zone. I'm assuming that's probably prior to us being there. Um, since we've been there, I have never received any complaints. In fact, only positive feedback from residents in the area about how it was nice to have it cleaned up. This, of course, is all prior to the new docks all arriving in the fall. But that is, uh, you know, the reasons for that is that Brad had mentioned is a matter of necessity. So that was all I had to comment on it. And I'll leave the floor open to whoever else. Thanks, Doug. Okay. Uh, anybody else to speak in favor of? Okay, I see nobody else. I'm gonna go for those that like to speak against the application. So am I seeing nobody speaking against? I will speak against, it's Joan okay. Ortlieb. Okay, can you identi yeah, identify yourself and your address please? Joan Ortley, Box 554, Kiwaitin. I live on the north side of um, the tracks, just in front or just behind this proposed or this current site. 
my husband and I have no, con we have no complaints about the DTL site. Let's put, let's start with that. That is no problem. They, they've actually cleaned it up. It looks wonderful. Our problem is the parking is atrocious. They've done this without approval from anyone, just moved everything in. We had a barge sitting there for like five years deteriorating, just, you know, they've, it's taken them a long time to get their act together here. And it's just, it, it's just so congested in the Bay. There's so much more traffic. There's boats parked all over. And I'm just afraid that something's gonna happen here. It's just an accident waiting to happen. That's all I really have to say about that. Okay, thank you. Anybody else to speak against? Hi, Wayne. Uh, I think you have. Uh, there's two uh, two people that have raised their hands. Okay, there. I can't see their faces. I think uh, one is uh, Colin Neal, and then uh, um, the name is Moncrief. Sorry, the, the second name. Okay. Okay, we'll go ahead, Colleen. Go ahead, please. Hi, uh, it's Colleen Neal. I live at 419 Bell Avenue. We are the property just before you hit the Kuwaitan Bridge there. So I have a couple of questions actually, and I'm not sure if anyone is able to respond to those questions tonight, but I'd still like to pose the question. I'd like to know if the city has intentions of actually increasing their docking at the Kuwaitan Arena, which would there in turn increase the traffic even more. And I think this is something that we need to keep in mind as we look at the overall picture and uh, both present and future use for that area. The other question that I have is, why is it that the Kuwaitan Public Works Yard is up, is available for lease to one person or one business? Um, perhaps there should be a request for proposal or other uses for that land before it's given to the person that just took over that space rather than out to the to the public. And further to that, why is this, why is leasing this space an option versus um, having it declared surplus and sold? My third question is the sort of sublet or sublease um, businesses that are also taking place, the size of the vessels that are and the size of the boats that are being docked on those docks, some of them are actually advertised as Airbnbs and people are staying on them as accommodation. We already know that we've got an issue with the boats in the bay, the, and I know that's not to be spoke about tonight, um, but again, just the impact, again, of disposal and waste and things that are happening at that site. And uh, Doug, I'm sorry, but I, about DTL, we've reached out, or neighbors have reached out, the amount of speeding that your barges do through the bay the red boy prior to our is like a, uh, a red flag. It seems that is anybody that hits that red boy before the bridge sees it as a, as a red flag to hit the path. And the speeding that has been taking place with the increased traffic is crazy. Um, people are coming from the lake under the bridge and don't stop until they hit the corner. So all of us that reside along that front end are being completely impacted by the speeds that people are using as they go through. And the latest was the shuttle that's being operated um, was also actually passing people like they were on a, on a highway the other day. Um, and again, waiting for an accident to happen. I agree that the use of parking is, we all need parking throughout the city and that there does need to be planning for parking. But this applicant has, this, has had the same issue and has professional planners on their payroll and tried the same thing when they put in the docks um, across from Safeway, that, that there was the docks went in prior to the parking. And this was brought forward to that applicant at that time when those docks went in and there was no proper planning for parking. And then these docks went in knowing full well they know because they've already had a project similar to this that that was not addressed. Um, so I don't think that this is a minor variance. I know it, it, it may meet the definition, but I think, again, 
the overall planning for that whole bay can't be looked at just simply with this application. And again, if there is application for more docks to go in at the Q8 and Arena by the city, which um, I understand that the ones that were abandoned over at Coney Island are tagged to be put at Kiwaton. That too will increase. We have seen multiple cars with unfortunately Manitoba license plates parked on our street for two weeks at a time and they'll come and move them five feet forward or back to make it look like they've moved, but they are there. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Okay, just quickly, Colleen, um, Kevin, is there is there anything that you'd want to like? One of the questions is about expansion of the docking. Are you are you able to answer that question? Uh, Adam, are you aware of anything? I'm sorry, I'm just not aware of the any plans regarding the marina. The arena. Yeah, no, I, I can speak to a little bit, and, and unfortunately, I don't have uh, uh, some fulsome answers there for for Colleen, just on the basis to which the the docking plans are are handled by a uh, a different department. Um, so I can't really comment on the, uh, the the plans in terms of docking expansion in the area moving forward. Um, in terms of the actual lease agreement, so I do know that was uh, has been in, in effect for, for some time now on the public works yard. Um, generally, the approach has been, and we've, we've seen it with the various properties in which we, we move to dispose of them opposed to actually operate a lease. Um, but uh, and, you know, it depends on the circumstance where um, the uh, a lease uh, type of arrangement may just make sense from uh, uh, you know whether it's a business case perspective or whatnot. But uh, uh, that lease is is once again handled by uh, our community services department. Okay, Colleen, that answers two of your questions. I think you had no, one more. It, it, no, it actually doesn't answer any of my questions. No, but, <laughs> but thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Chair recognizes Jerry Monfrey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I've already provided some comments via email. Can we have uh, your, let's give them your name and address here quick, Jerry. Okay, Jerry Monfrey, 108 Ottawa Street, Key Waiting. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I've already submitted some comments. I just want to expand on those and actually uh, I have more questions than comments if that's possible. And uh, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd maybe uh, like them addressed to Mr. Sumner if he, uh, regarding his report, if that's okay. all right. Thank you, yeah, go ahead. Um, you're made aware of the safety concerns in Portage Bay. There's no appearance of weight given in your evaluation or recommendations to the safety and concerns of the residents and lake users. Why is that? And um, if there is, how much? Uh, yeah, so, you know, it's certainly we've been made aware of residents' concerns regarding uh, activities uh, related to boating in uh, Portage Bay, and, uh, and I I'm certainly don't mean to be dismissive of them, uh, and they are a matter of the public record on this. Uh, in terms of my report, it focuses on the land use issue here. Uh, you know, and uh, it certainly appears uh, from what I've seen that there may be a need for education by Two Bears Marina of its uh, dock uh, renters. Uh, it's hard to tie, you know, uh, uh, you know, other than these being new renters that may not be aware of the uh, of the uh, of the regulations and the speed limit and the the boys on uh, Portage Bay, it's it's hard to say that you know providing especially in regards to the application or the this partic particular application in regards to offsite parking, I I can't tie the provision of offsite parking to uh, having a direct impact on uh, on the traffic on Portage Bay. I, I would certainly hope that I've heard the radio spots from the OPP encouraging specifically. Uh, uh, boaters to uh, beware and, and behave in, in that particular uh, channel. And I, I hope that people are heeding those uh, and, uh, you know, just, and, and that they're being enforced. Okay, I, I have numerous questions. Would you like me to just go through them all or just one at a time so you can respond? Um, why don't you, let's hear your questions and then okay. we'll see how well, okay, go ahead, Jerry. Let's hear the okay. questions. Okay, so, and this, this is regarding uh, the report itself. So in the four tests, one is the, the variance must be minor. So you gave a passing grade because it provides all the required parking. 
Uh, I don't understand this logic. Um, you say in your report that in the scope of this variance, the scope of this variance is on the allowable distance for off-site parking. Now, whether the application provides all the parking or not has nothing to do with determining whether it's a minor, uh, whether the variance is minor. Parking from two miles away and still passed by the standard. Um, in addition, um, th there, uh, I'm, I understand there's a use of a shuttle, which also speaks to the fact that this, this is not, or that this is a very significant change and the increase is not minor in nature. So having said that, minor is a subjective term and can't be measured. Can you be specific regarding variance uh, bylaw 3.2, and explain how you determine that a 455% increase is minor? So. Yes, yeah, so certainly I can respond to that. And uh, yes, I, I, I did point, uh, you know, uh, I perhaps muddied the water a bit in the in the report by mentioning the fact that they were providing all of the required parking spots. And you're correct; that is a, a separate issue. And uh, so I apologize for any muddiness there. And you're correct that uh, the, the determination of what's minor is uh, is largely subjective. What one person considers minor may not be considered another. And uh, and the fact of the matter is, we look into case law and and under the Planning Act in the province of Ontario. Uh, where the applicant considers uh, something to be a minor variance uh, in, in a request where it, where minor variances are challenged on that basis, it tends to get mired down in the in consideration of what whether something is minor or not, and 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 uh, in, in case law has fallen in favor of the applicants who uh, who believe their uh, application to be minor in their request, and that is part of the consideration of the planning advisory committee, uh, you know, in in terms of making its decision here tonight, and you know, and it's certainly something that we look at from a planning perspective in in considering an application. Uh, you know, in in this case, they, they appear to have made plans to. Uh, you mentioned the shuttle surface, uh, but you know, and they are making attempts to uh, mitigate that distance. Uh, uh, you know, which, which I hope will help to uh, uh, take off. Uh, you know, some of the impact of the, the uh, distance being uh, quite exceptional for what's normally allowed. Um, but you know, it is their right to make that request under the Planning Act. Okay, so the. the so what, what I'm hearing then is that they have the right to make that request, but you, you're the one that has to make a recommendation to say that, yes, it is minor. And in your opinion, the 455% increase, given all the circumstances with the addition of a shuttle, with the, with the safety issues going across the tracks, all of that, in your determination, this is minor? Yes, I, I've determined it can be considered minor. Um, you know, we, you okay. know it's, it's, it's a large distance. Uh, I probably walk further distance every time I go to the mall and park in the mall parking lot and try to get to a store inside the mall. It's, uh, you know, it's, it, it tends to be subjective. And in this case, uh, I think it's uh, uh, the, probably the best that can be made out of the current uh, situation there. Carry on, Gary, go ahead. Okay. So you briefly mentioned your report that applicant also requires relief to allow offsite parking. Um, to me, this isn't something that should be just uh, swept away in a single comment. A minor variance can't provide a provision, exception, or allowance. It can only vary one. Now, the bylaw that relates to the 90 meter exception to on site parking is specifically for commercially zoned lands, not commercially used lands. Um, bylaw 3.23. Point one C says that all parking must be on site and provides no relief for industrial zone lands. Official plan section 3.15.5 G also requires this site have adequate on site parking. Can you explain how, re how relief to allow on site parking is achieved and which zoning bylaw allows for a zone specific exemption to be used in a broad way like this? Yes, yeah, so, so it, it's you know, requesting relief from the, the limitation of the, the, the current provision for offsite parking. So 
Uh, part of that relief is uh, allowing it at 410 meters and uh, the, the other part of the relief is allowing it in the particular zones in question. But, but the, the, the zone in question, there, there's no relief allowed because there, there's no allowance for it to begin with. There's, there's no variance allowed in, 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 uh, for offsite parking in heavy, heavy industrial. You're, you're, like you're, you're borrowing a, a clause or a provision for commercially zoned area. And, and, uh, and through past experience, having to um, have a zoning bylaw amendment rather than a minor variance, that is the specific reason I needed the amendment, amendment because there was no provision in there. I, uh, how, how do you vary something that isn't there? Well, I, I can't speak to past applications. Uh, and this is the approach we took to this one. Uh, you know, I, I won't provide a, a legal opinion. I, I'm, I'm not a legal expert on, uh, in terms of uh, the act, but uh, you know, if, uh, if certainly if the committee is uncomfortable with that uh, interpretation, uh, we can certainly uh, take that back and get an illegal opinion. Okay. Um, well, another one of the tests gets a passing grade because you say the additional parking is much needed, a much needed amenity for existing marina users. But according to the report, there's 19 excess parking spaces <laughs> that, that could be available um, for existing marina users. So uh, um, there, there is no more, there, there is no more parking required for existing users, but that, but your rationale is that there, that it's required. Uh, well, I, I'm uh, I was, you know basing my comments on the uh, the sketch provided in uh, in with the application that uh, that indicates a number of parking spaces on the property. Uh, if they were if they weren't allowed to have offsite parking for this property, uh, I'm pointing how much how many additional spaces would be or how many do additional docking slips would be. Uh, would be supported by the parking that is available on site uh, that uh, those uh, additional do docking steps, slips would still require the associated permission application to be able to expand, uh, but it would limit the uh, ability to expand. So, you know, if hypothetically this minor variance were to be rejected, the, the associated permission, even if approved, uh, could only support a, an additional 19 slips by what's uh, shown there for the parking. Uh, that parking will still be subject to site plan control. So beyond that sketch, they will have to, the, uh, uh, the applicant will have to provide a, a dimension site plan uh, that shows that they meet all provisions of the zoning bylaw with regards to such things as size of parking space, uh, size of travel lanes between parking spaces. And so, uh, you know that's that 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 19 spaces is based on that sketched, uh, but uh, you know I won't say that you know it's going to be exactly 19 spaces until I see a site plan that shows compliance with the zoning bylaw. Okay, so so just just for quick clarification, and the 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 test that you say when what the when you say the existing parking, the 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 existing users require parking. You're talking about the new parking spaces you're not talking about existing parking spaces then or existing users well the the exist there 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 are an exit the existing boat slips that were permitted there the uh, seven fingers that come out uh, on the western portion of the site which are considered to be legally non uh, legally non-complying uh, the key part there being legally so those can continue to exist and uh, so and uh, there is part of the part of the part of the of the parking shown on their sketch, uh, those uh, parking has to be provided first for those existing users that are requirement of one parking space per dock slip before additional parking can be used for uh, the marine expansion. Okay, I miss. I mean, I, I thought that there was uh, in enough parking and actually surplus parking for the existing users based on the numbers I looked at. How many more questions have you got, Gary? Uh, just a couple here. Okay. Um, you, uh, okay. The interdepartmental in circulation included comments from the building. You, you, you've already gone through these, but uh, one of them being from the building, it feels uh, the variance will facil facilitate and perpetuate unnecessary 
unnecessary uh, legal non-conforming use. From engineering, it says there's no un unfettered access to, uh, um, to the Kuwait and public yards. The area is not pedestrian friendly. There isn't much they can do to be uh, to make it, um, and so on. So the um, these interdepartmental inter comments come in, but I don't I don't see where there's being given any weight to these in your recommendation regarding the safety at the uh, at the railway crossing. It's it looks to me like you've dismissed all these and said it's just going to be handled in a traffic study which comes after the fact. But yes, you've, got, so, um, you, you've got comments from, from the professionals within the city that says there's really nothing you can do to make this any safer. But we, you know, and, and with uh, respect to our, uh, our city engineer, and, and we've had this conversation, uh, myself and him, uh, he is not a, a traffic engineer. That's not his special, uh, specialty. He's a municipal engineer. Uh, so, uh, and uh, so our recommendation or my recommendation is to seek the uh, a, a consultation uh, from a, a qualified traffic engineer that specializes in uh, such things as uh, traffic safety and, and, uh, and design of streets and roads and intersections. And to have that independent consultant provide uh, an expert opinion on how best to uh, mitigate any safety concerns at that crossing, and uh, so that we can then look at those recommendations and uh, see to it that they're implemented to ensure the safety of the users of the properties. Or not. Or not, and, and I guess the or not is is where I'm wondering. Like this, the the report seems to be coming after the fact. This the city engineer suggests that there's little that can be done. And uh, so further than that, I, I guess what I'm going to ask is who's going to pay for these changes because they're, they're likely going to be uh, very expensive. And now that the city is aware that, that there are uh, safety concerns at this crossing and government road, if this passes, what liability um, exposure. exposure does the city have? Uh, the, the improvements uh, associated with that study would be at the cost of the applicant. And it, that's in writing somewhere as well, I'm assuming. And, um, and yeah, the, we had the, well, part of the recommendation is to see that those recommendations are uh, that any recommendations from the uh, uh, from the consultant are uh, implemented to the satisfaction of the city. So it is incumbent upon the applicant if they want to see this through to uh, being approved uh, to uh, undertake those uh, improvements. So it, so so the approval is subject to them following through on the improvements. For the satisfaction of the city. Okay. Okay, well, I, I think I think that's about all I have other than just, uh, I, I just wanna make one more comment here if I could, Mr. Chair. Um, it's just that my opinion, there's many issues with this application. One is that it appears to be a catch-all that in part is requesting a variance for provision that doesn't exist and therefore can't be approved in a minor variance in the first place. There's no allowance for off-site parking in heavy industrial zone areas. And without this, there's no variance to apply for. Uh, even, if there's an, uh, uh, even if there is an allowance to vary, I find it a massive stretch and a very generous interpretation of the criteria for being minor in nature to begin with. Uh, thank you for your time. Thanks, Jerry. Okay, um, anybody else? Adam, can you see anybody else? There's nobody else to speak against. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move on to questions from PAC members. And um, I, I think I'm going to ask the first few questions. And my first question, I'm going to, I would like to direct to uh, Doug. Doug, can you turn, turn your screen on? Yeah, you have me here. Okay. So Doug, I just want to clarify a couple of things from what I've heard and from what I'm seeing. Under what terms are you on that property? Are you like how how did you come to be on that property? Do you have are you like how are you there? So I I rent that property from two bears like one else renting both. There's other contractors who rent dock slips or area. Okay, we, we need you to right. say that one more time, okay? So I, I rent a, a 
rent the space that I rent. Like I rent that from Two Bears Marine. Like any contractor that doesn't own waterfront that has to rent a dock slip somewhere to carry on with their work. So okay. we, so we have you're... like okay. a rent agreement. Okay, so you're you're yeah. there under a rental agreement. You you have no lease arrangements or anything. You're just there under rental agreement. We're under a long-term rental agreement. Yes. A long-term. Well, I don't lease. That. Yeah, I, we can't hear. What you're saying. A trick question. So I don't have a, a lease agreement. They lease it from CP. Then I rent the area that we've established a long-term rental agreement with them. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And the other question is, um, so when you put the docks in, when you've done everything there. Were you, did you take out permits to do the work? No. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, my next question would be to Brad. Brad, are you there? I am, go ahead, yep. So Brad, the set of docks that are sitting in the back of the bay, yep. that are just sitting there, um, that uh, they're just being stored there. Are there plans, like, uh, is there plans in the making to where those docks are going to go? There are. It's never been the plan to put them on on site where they are now, where the, where the existing docks, the non-conforming docks are. We put in just as many docks as we had requests from the Rio Bay customers when that marina went, decided to not uh, operate any longer. Uh, the rest of the docks have been, I've applied for the con once I knew, my my bad, that we needed permits to do this. I uh, we have a permit to put in. There was a bad set of docks in front of Myers North Penny on Mainland or on Main Street, sorry, that I'm replacing with the exact number of slips. Uh, and the rest of the docks we have use for them down at our lodge down the lake, and the rest of them are going to be uh, sold off to people who are always looking for docks. And the only reason why they're still there are because we had an unfortunate accident with our with our uh, our the boat that we pull things with the tug, and it sank a couple of weeks ago, and it will be up and running here very shortly, and all those docks will be removed. Okay, so they're being removed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So my next question, Kevin, um, and I know we discussed this, but I want to discuss this in front of the committee. Um, there are no comments from CPR, which normally they're circulated and they give comments for the committee. You have told me that CPR has signed off on this application, but in your planning report, you don't mention them anywhere. So again, can you, as a question, that's a question to you, can you elaborate on yeah. that? I guess the, the simplest way to explain it is this is CPR's application. They've authorized uh, Two Bears Marina to make this application on the, their behalf, but this is CPR's property. Uh, and uh, so it, technically CPR via Two Bears is asking for this uh, variance. Okay, so my question is, were they circulated on people crossing the train tracks. Like in other words, to for people to cross the train tracks, were they circulated on that part of, not, not anything to do with, with uh, the privacy or anything like that. What I'm talking about is were they made aware that people are gonna be walking across the train tracks? Yeah, prior, uh, I guess, prior to receiving the applications, uh, 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 a representative of CPR uh, was uh, party to conversations about uh, the non-conforming uses on the property and the, the associated properties, and uh, and there was conversations around the, the the submission of the application. So I have no reason to uh, expect that you know this was. This, this was an employee of CPR who was responsible for CPR property. So, uh, you know, I, I, I can't, pro you know, I don't know what happens in, inside of CPR. Uh, you know, I would hope that everybody that needs to know about it knows about it, uh, just as when we circulate uh, applications from other uh, individuals or, or, or companies, we, we hope that when we send it to CPR that the right people are looking at it. Uh, but, uh, you know, at this point, we have no reason to, 
to suspect that CPR is unaware of their own application. And once again, I understand that, but I'm all I'm trying to say, you know, by, by question form, you don't mention any part of it in your planning report. And this committee has always seen a, the comments from CPR, whether, whether we need them or not. In this case, I'm, I'm having a hard time accepting that the appropriate person in CPR wouldn't be circulated and we waited for comments. And then again, when, when we're going to go ahead and we're talking about doing a, um, uh, the engineer, it, it, like, again, my thought is that if we're going to go to the point of having this engineer's study done, would he not want to know where CPR stand on people crossing the track? Like, would he not want to know what's going on? But can I, can I comment quickly? No, no, hold on. Um, okay. Sorry. But all, all I'm saying again is that, you know, again, like we, we have no information re from CPR regarding their comments on this application. And again, it, uh, that's all I'm trying to go with this. We talk about an engineer doing a report. But I sure like think that that this committee should be made aware of what CPR's thought are thoughts are regarding what we're doing. I, I guess the difference is uh, other applications were, but from other entities where we had to bring it to the attention of CPR. In this case, it's CPR's own application. It's their application. Yeah, they're the property owner. Uh, they, you know, all all rights and responsibilities are theirs as property owners, just as any enforcement associated with non-compliance on the property uh, is their responsibility as well. Okay, fine. Okay, um, let's move on, Bev. Let's go to you. You're, we can't hear you, Bev. There we go. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, my very first question will be for you. And what I would like to know is what are the consequences if somebody else had put docks in at their place and put a ramp and everything? What are the consequences? They, if they didn't have the permit, they did not go through the proper channels. Um, I know for a fact there was a place in Kuwaitan that the contractor did not get a permit. He built this carport, I'll finish it did not have a permit, so the city had him remove it. So I'm thinking there should be something for docs. So can you answer that question for me, please? Yeah, so, so there, there's a process we follow whenever uh, there is a non-compliance issue that's brought to our attention or uh, that we get become aware of either through the city's own concerns or the receipt of a complaint from the public. Uh, so the first step in that, uh, st in that uh, process is to seek voluntary compliance. We don't Proceed directly to uh, to you know to the formal and legal enforcement. Uh, we first seek uh, voluntary uh, compliance. Uh, so we ask that uh, anybody who owns something that's non-complying -com uh, seek uh, any you know approvals such as this application uh, for variance and the associated application for permission and the application for site plan control, which I've uh, mentioned in association with uh, this property. If the, if the property owner is unsuccessful in obtaining the necessary approvals, uh, then we fall back to the unfortunate uh, options of either us proceeding with the formal enforcement uh, and perhaps uh, ending up in courts or the prop property owner uh, remedying through removal of the non-complying or non-conforming structure. Is there a fine? Is there a monetary fine? Yes, the Planning Act sets out a, a range uh, and a maximum fine that can be associated with uh, uh, with uh, uh, with uh, with enforcement under the Planning Act. Uh, that uh, the 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 uh, the actual fine is uh, set in, in court if we have to proceed to that step. Okay, well, I'd like to see them fine, but that's my opinion. <laughs> okay, thank you for that answer. Um, I'm wondering for the CPR crossing, um, do, or has he, does he have these people that are, they're already renting the, the spots and they're going to be parking across the street. Is he having them sign a waiver to cross or can the city have them sign a waiver so that we're not responsible if something happens? Would that be an option that we could look at? 
that's not something we're considering. Uh, the, there's, I've been through these waiver situations before, and and uh, and you you accept liability uh, when you're party to a waiver. Uh, it's often uh, uh, as to whether two bears themselves, uh, that would be something that perhaps Brad could uh, ask for you whether they address it in any such way. Brad, have they done anything Look, like that? You want, you want to ask the question of Brad? Yes. Okay. Is he there? Brad? Brad? Yeah, I am. What's the question? Sorry, Bev. Thank you. I'm asking if uh, your organization is having waivers signed by those folks that are crossing the track to get to parking on the north side. We've, we've not uh, had anybody sign a waiver for that particular action. We do supply uh, a service that that allows people not to have to do that. We we do it for them in a in a vehicle. Uh, that was part of the, I guess that was part of our program. It still is. Uh, if that's an action that we need to take, I would I would like to know that, and we definitely will. And and it goes along with everything else. It's with with uh, the Moncrief's uh, concerns about speeding limits. I I really don't know that it's because of the increased uh, dockers I, I i can't say that for sure i've not seen it myself very many times but we've also sent emails out to all of all the customers and everybody who's, who's actually on facebook with with uh, two bears would have received it saying that please slow down there's a speed restriction it's one of the only bays in our area that have this uh, for safety's sake and for residents and so we are taking actions to make sure that people are they recognize that there's concerns from citizens in Kuwait and there's concerns from the bot from the pause. There's concerns from Kuwait. And, okay, hold on, Brad. Yeah. Your message or your question has been answered, has it not? Okay, yes, it has. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going on. Mm -hmm. I'm rambling. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Beth. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering if the bylaw officer, um, we got information about you know when the report was sent out does he need some more power some more help to to help him with that situation over there because i walk over there and i know it's just crazy at times so you know if a car has been parked there for over a week or something can he just have it told what is the situation kevin can you answer that question yeah i i won't you know i i certainly know from speaking to our bylaw enforcement uh division that uh you know that they are kept busy in Kuwait and, uh, over the summer, and uh, that they have a lot of concerns, and 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 that Kuwait residents have a lot lots of concerns. I hear from them frequently, and uh, and and heck, when I was out there on the uh, the other day taking some site photos, I you know I, I saw a vehicle and you know a ticket being given to a, a vehicle that's parked at two bears that was obstructing a, a stop sign. So yeah, I, I know that they're on on top of things out there as much as they can be. Um, you know, it, I think towing is, you know, part of the, you know, it, it, there's discretionary that, you know, discretion has to be uh, uh, considered as to, you know, what the infraction is and what it, you know, any risk to public safety. I, I won't, uh, I, I won't pretend to be an expert on when, on the decisions they have to make on the street and the, and the process that they follow. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I know that's, you know, that's part of their range of powers ultimately. What about signage? Can what can we do to help him do his job? Then do we need to put more signage up that you know no parking or you'll be told? Or what can we do to help him? Uh, yeah, I know him there's her, lots. I don't know who it is. Yeah, I know, I know there's lots of conversations, and, and we and we need to have both men and women in our uh, by law enforcement, so either one's applicable. Uh, but uh, you know, and I, and it's a part of a conversation with the community. Uh, 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 residents will know that there's some streets that have uh, limits uh, on the length of parking and uh, the, it's always a balance between trying to restrict uh, the problem parkers versus leaving enough liver enough liberty to uh, that normal you know the residents of Kuwait and can continue to live their lives and and park as they're required uh, so I, I know that there's been discussions about some of the streets that aren't as restricted being more restricted but uh, you know I think that I think that's a, a, a whole separate conversation for another day with our bylaw enforcement officers that you know I do know I do know that's something that, that's very front of mind for them. Okay I'm just thinking this may be the opportunity to be able to help. Um, I'm also wondering Kevin because there were no no permits um, obtained for this 
what is the procedure? What should they have done? Like when does MNR get involved? Uh, navigable waters, they, uh, Mr. Carwacki, when he did his um, application, he had also done an application under Navigable Waters Act to put his docks in. So where are we in, in the scheme of things with this situation? Uh, I, I can't speak for MNRF other than to say they are aware of the situation. I believe they're watching to see what happens with the city. Um, uh, they do have their own uh, parallel permitting process uh, that, uh, that is required. Uh, I, Mr. Dirksen may be able to give you a more up-to-date uh, you know, uh, uh, information on any recent conversations they've had with MNRF. Uh, we were in con when uh, some of the uh, when we were receiving letters and communications with concerns about uh, some of the uh, uh, the large cruisers and uh, barges or houseboats that were being uh, moored uh, in Kuwaitan Bay further east. Uh, we did reach out to MNRF and bring those to the attention of uh, MNRF, so we do know that they're looking at uh, those as well. Um, exactly where they are at and looking at those, I I, I can't see where exactly how that's proceeded. Okay, uh, I guess part of my question on that is, uh, you know, the wildlife, the fish habitat, all of that, when we did Scott Island, they had to have a report, uh, you know, about the fish habitat, all that spawning. And I mean, we know there's turtles over there. We know there's loons. I'm wondering why MNR has no concerns on your report. Like, to me, somebody missed the boat there because we know all of that is at risk. So it, does that come after this application? Is there is there another process that we're looking at? I would like to see something that it's protected, especially we seem to be getting much more um, traffic in there and, and something's gonna something's gonna happen, not only to another boulder, but to the wildlife. Yeah, we have no identified mapped habitat within 120 meters of the, and this gets more into the permission uh, discussion, uh, but of the new docks, if they were, if there was uh, a, a, an identified, uh, uh, wild, sensitive wildlife area or envi sensitive environmental area, fish hatchery uh, within 120 meters, uh, we would likely require an, an, an EIS, an environmental impact uh, study to uh, our statement, sorry, uh, uh, prepared as a condition of this, uh, but uh, by the policies of our official plan, when we're not aware of any, any particularly sensitive uses, uh, that isn't triggered. So I'm gonna interrupt okay. for a sec, Bev. Thank you. In the, in the report, in the staff report under comments. Yeah. A comment from the MNR, Minister of Natural Resources had no concern. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. How can they have not have any well, concerns? Let okay, so let's, you're, yeah, you're okay. Discussion. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a, um, MOE had some initials. Where did I find it here? I was wondering, oh, here it is. Oh, no, that's not it. The initials from MERS. What is that? What is that? Sorry, I, I should have written that out in full. So that's a record of site condition. So sometimes when there's changes in uses, uh, particularly to a more sensitive use under the act that uh, that they operate under, they ca there can be a requirement for a record of site condition, and it's a it's a provincial regulation that uh, municipalities uh, essentially administer it. We, we have to require the record of site condition. Uh, so we uh, sometimes in cases like this, we just seek their confirmation as to whether one is required under their interpretation of the act. And in this case, they determined that uh, that the one wasn't, that this wasn't considered, uh, Marina wasn't considered a more sensitive use than a rail yard essentially. Oh, People. I see. Okay. Um, in your report, you were talking about there was no guarantee. Um, I'm just wondering uh, about the site report application. You had mentioned that there's really no guarantee that two bears will apply for a site plan. Um, the site plan application. Is there some way that we? Is there a time frame that we can put on so that if this goes forward, we can say, well, we need the site plan application. How do you work around that? They, their site plan control uh, approval is required for these to become permitted docks. Uh, we can't issue any permits uh, and these aren't considered complying uses until site plan control approval is received under our site plan control bylaw. Uh, so, uh, you know, under a hypothetical situation where uh, Two Bears Marina didn't proceed with, uh, uh, with uh, site plan control approval, then we would have a property that remains in contravention of our site plan control bylaw and the city would need to take appropriate enforcement steps um, uh, to bring that into compliance. Um, so <laughs> the, so you've got something in, in place. Be an enforcement issue, yeah. 
Thank you. Um, the questions that Colleen Neal had, I wonder if uh, you would be able to get answers and distribute them to PAC. I would be interested in seeing what the answers were. Sorry, which particular question? Um, Colleen Neal had uh, about four questions that uh, we're not able to answer tonight. I wonder if you could find what the answers are and distribute the answers to the PAC committee. Yep. Colleen, yep. are you there? Colleen, are you there? Yes, I am. Well, can you send that? Can you send those questions to Kevin by email? Yes, I can. Thank you. That's all of my questions. Thank you, Kevin. That was very good. Thanks very much for your help. You're welcome. Robert. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have a couple questions uh, through you to Kevin. Kevin, how long is the lease agreement going to be as part of the recommendation uh, section A? So how long would the lease agreement be for? So that's to be negotiated. Uh, typically it's uh, it's for a, a set period of time in the initial agreement with, and then with clauses in the in the agreement for renewal. I know it's a, that's what their current lease agreement was, was uh, leave it uh, with, was five years uh, with uh, clauses that allowed that to be extended at the, at the end with, uh, you know, with provisions for automatic inflation of the, uh, of the cost per square foot. And, and so, um, you know, it's typical to, you know, it, it, that's a fairly standard uh, approach to these types of agreements. Um, you know, if, if the lease agreement were to expire or, or you know, if, if there was a failure to meet the, you know, the, the monetary portion of it, or if there's contravention of the lease agreement, then that would bring, you know, if for some reason it ends, then that would bring the docs back into non-compliance. And then uh, Kevin, uh, follow up with that, then what happens when they go into non-compliance? Then is the, the minor variance, is, it's not null and void. Once it's done, it's done the minor variance. So what what is the mechanism that uh, makes the application applicant regain those parking spaces if he loses the lease or the city deems that land surplus and they don't purchase it? Yeah, the applicant would have to find other offsite parking within that uh, within that distance. So the, the, the variance allows them to have offsite parking uh, if approved up to that distance. It doesn't obligate them to, you know, if, if they find other, uh, you know, if, if for some reason uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, lease agreement were to, uh, you know, fail for whatever reason, uh, we'd probably work with them to try to determine, uh, find alternative uh, parking, but uh, uh, that could be tricky as we because we'll also have a site plan agreement that's uh that's signed and you know and it we haven't got that drafted yet so i can't i can't talk about the contents of that yet uh but uh there there may be provisions in that so if you know, yeah, there there'd be there'd be uh there'd be probably multiple issues that would need to be sorted out if uh, the lease were to uh fail thanks uh, last question kevin again in the recommendation section b uh, you refer to the engineering report and that the recommend recommendations and improvements to the satisfaction of the city. Can, can you describe to me and maybe the PAC members who who is the city? So who is going to be the individually ultimately in, responsible for ensuring the safety of those that are going to be crossing the rail line? So essentially signing off on the recommendations just so that I would have that peace of mind that somebody's going to be in charge of ensuring that safety of the individuals. So the, that would be the the city as a team. Uh, we, we, I actually, you know, spoke to our city engineer about you know where we should uh, put that authority and and not knowing what any recommendations might be, we didn't want to narrowly assign the responsibility to one individual. So that would be something where we administratively as a, as, as a team. Uh, would be, you know, would assess whatever recommendations were made and uh, determine, you know, what we needed to do to determine, uh, you know, what was compliance or satisfaction on the part of the city and, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, administratively, uh, responsibly rests with our, our chief administrative officer and uh, uh, potentially, you know, uh, uh, certainly, you know, if things became you know, in, in exceptional cases, even potentially with counsel, uh, if something needed to be brought to their attention. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Uh, that's all I have for questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. John Barr. Uh, Wayne, let's um, 
it's difficult to ask questions or uh, have discussion with each application in isolation. Um, I don't. I don't have much in the way of questions. I do have a lot uh, to say in discussion. Um, did you want to do discussion and questions at the same time, or are we doing this? In the no, I do not. No, no. I'd like okay. to do questions first. Uh, can I ask questions about the marina or just about the parking? Um, just that. Yeah, just ask. Yeah, marina as well. Okay. Brad, do you know what the surface area is? First of all, are there any cribs on those docks? One of those docks? Uh, the, no, no, none of the docks have cribs under them. The uh, existing, uh, I guess, Sherman's Marina or Two Bears Marina does, but the floating docks are all floating. There's no pipes, no dock, no cribs. Okay. Um, do you know what the surface area of the land is that the docks are attached to? Can you repeat that? Sorry, John. Do you know what the surface area of the land is that the docks are attached to? Mm, you know what? I don't know that offhand. I can't, I, I'm I can't asking that. that question. Um, I'm asking that question because if it's greater than 15 square meters, you require a permit from MNR. If it's less, you don't under the Public Lands Act. Um, you, mean the least, is the, the, you mean the least portion of the land, John? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I believe I there is, I, I believe we do, sorry to interrupt. I believe we do have, uh, I know we, we have a lease agreement with the MNR as far as the waterfront of the years. And we do have a lease okay, so agreement with the, and we do have a lease agreement with the CP rail. Okay, and for Kevin, um, the, the, all the land on the on, on the one portion against the docks is leased from CPR, correct? And that's uh, an industrial zone, yes. right? And a parking lot's permitted in an industrial zone. Yes. Correct? The Kuwaitan, the Kuwaitan yard is an industrial zone and a parking lot's permitted there. Yes. Uh, Brad, how many? How many so actually, how uh, many the Kuwait. Sorry, the Kuwaitan Yard. Actually, uh, let me just double check. I don't believe the Kuwaitan Yard is zoned in. I, I checked. It's an MH. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Thought it might be institutional. It's in my one map here. Um, well, can, I, can I? Yeah. Can I ask on. Brad another question then? Uh, Brad, how, or, um, how many? Potential parking sites are available at the uh, old Q8 and yard. Would you potentially, know? potentially, if uh, with the entire space, with some of it usable for storage boats, because summer is not storage; it's two different. You understand? There's two different seasons. Mm -hmm. One's one seasonal with our lake residents. The other ones are lake residents boat storages. Uh, uh, I believe in Janina's diagram. You know what? Let me pull it up, John, so I'm not giving misinformation. Sure. And I, I, yes, I can confirm that is an industrial zoning. My apologies for my temporary confusion. Okay. It is zoned MH. Carry on, John. Well, I'm, what I'm trying to I'm trying to find from Brad is how much parking is available in the Q8 yard and how much he's using. And if there would be any plans um, on the parking left over, if that could potentially go uh, to other uses um, to reduce the amount of parking on streets. That was my thing. We, I, think we're, I think we need to talk more with the city because there's a, there's a large amount of land that's unusable at this point, but could be developed that I think I'm not, well, obviously Kevin is aware of. For parking. And, pardon me? Or that could be developed for parking. That definitely, absolutely could. Yeah, and I've, I've walked it. I'm not an engineer, obviously, or anything like that, but I do have ideas and there's a large portion of very flat land that could be used for additional parking also outside of what the, the current flat land uh, at the Public Works building has. Okay. 
Does any does anybody know if if there's much parking on the streets uh, up the hill on the um, or if, if there's much parking taken by people with boats on boats at boat slips um, north of the um, of the uh, area of the application? I, I I assume there's not. You're talking about the area up the hill. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I'm not aware of any complaints regarding parking uh, further up the hill. Okay, and does anybody know how many docking slips are available on private properties, residential properties that are rented to people that don't own, don't own the properties, but uh, dock their boats there? That'd be a hard question to answer. So in, in, regard, like, uh, in regards to other properties in the city? It would be, but if you look at Front Street, there's 14 properties with docks. Uh, well, I'm just using Front Street for, as an example, and there is a possibility that that um, that boats are docked at some of these slips that don't belong to people that own the property that the slips are on. Yeah, and and, and we, don't, we don't have that level of information. Uh, technically, if anybody's renting a boat slip, they should have a parking space for the user of that boat slip. Uh, I won't pretend uh, that, you know, all residents of shoreline properties who rent out a boat slip are checking with the city. No, I, no I'm, I'm sure not, but part of the, I think part of the problem with parking is, is that particular issue, notwithstanding the problem with uh, to Barrett's parking. But in any case, those are all my questions for now. Hey, thank you. Uh, Tannis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, more of a clarification, clarification question that might help um, Mr. Moncrief a little bit. To Kevin, um, as an accountant, I too struggle with the definition of minor. And uh, when I see it over 100% change, I'm like, that's not minor. Um, but we've talked about it before, and to clarify, it's the impact of the change, and um, we're thinking the allowing the off-site parking has a minor impact on the on the area surrounding area. We realize that it does have an impact, but it's it's not a different impact or a different situation of our, of what's already there. It just might aggravate things a little bit. Um, cause, but if the safety concerns are addressed properly, it actually might help alleviate the issue. Would that be a correct understanding, Kevin? Yeah, that's a very, very well explained, uh, Tannis. Okay, thank you. That's and, my only question. Okay, uh, John McDougall. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. I just have a couple of questions of Mr. Dirksen, if I can just clarify a couple of things. Brad, you want to turn on your mic, please? Yeah, yeah, go, go ahead, John. So, Brad, the, on the on the south side, like at the the Two Bears Marina, how many docking slips are are rented? Like, I know you have some come and go business for fuel and things like that, but how many dock slips are on the south side? Uh, well, we we have both dock slips with parking spots and dock slips without. Uh, Twenty eight. So there's 28 dock slips? Yeah. And then, and then the north side, not including the 72 that you're looking at adding on here, what what do you have? One hundred and uh, just again, I don't want to give you misinformation here. I'm just pulling this up. I think it's 180. 180? Yeah, approximately. Then, I, I can forward you the, the actual number, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Okay, and then and you're looking at the, the additional ones on top of the 180? Yeah, except that the, just to make it clear that not everybody needs parking spots. Some are residents on Station Hill and some are residents down Ottawa Street and some are residents on May, Bay Street. Okay. So they and walk, that, they, they and walk to the ground. And that was going to bring me to a question. So if I come to you to rent a, a boat slip, I don't have to have a, a, a parking spot. Is that correct? 
in the past, that's how it's always been exactly. So it's it's less X number of dollars if you don't. Okay. Because the, because, because in at this point we do not have any more parking spots, so that's how we're doing it. Okay. And is the reverse true too? At 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 some point, I can rent a parking spot because uh, I don't need a, a boat slip. No, no, we do not rent parking spots by themselves. Okay. Do you have a connection to any of the boats that are in the bay? Like there's some cabin cruisers and houseboats and whatnot? No, we have nothing to do with that. Nothing? Okay. I, I did, when I was doing a site visit, I saw some activity between uh, one of the boats and, and your dock. So, but I didn't inquire with the people what, what the relationship was. So. To, the, to the best of my knowledge, well, I know for a fact, we, we do not rent any of those mooring balls for sure. Okay. All right. And then, so just clarification on the parking. So, on the north side, I think I heard a number or read a number, 149 spots. Yeah. And then there's 10 on the south side. Correct. Okay. So do you have people that are uh, of your 28 boat slips that are on the south side? Are they accessing parking on the north side? No. No? No. Every, uh, every person that has a docking spot that has paid for a parking spot has a parking pass. And we diligently enforce that. We walk around daily, uh, making sure that no one's parked where they're not supposed to be parked. And I think you feel, and I'm just, you know, we don't. Anyways, I'll just stop there. I was told to stop before. Okay. And then, so how many, um, and I'm just trying to get the numbers straight and because I'm sort of a numbers, numbers person or whatever. So mm -hmm. currently, how many parking spots do you have operational uh at the old public works yard like i know you're you're sort of you've gone beyond your uh no. the property that you guys have uh leased we, yeah yeah we have and we're hoping to to work with that but okay. where the uh where the docking spots are on cp lease land which is still the, the an area that we do lease it's part of our cp lease we have approximately 20 docking spots there for the unconforming docks and the rest of the slips are, or the rest of the docking or the parking spots are at the boat center. We don't have, we don't have, we haven't, we haven't brought anybody else in from the existing seven fingers. They do not have, they do not have parking spots at the boat okay, center. So maybe, these are all, these are all for the, uh, the real bay customers. Okay. So maybe I didn't ask this, the question uh, clearly enough, but do you have, it, it's at the the old public works yard on Boat Lift Road, or I guess it's an extension of Government Road. Or... 80, 80 Government Road, yeah. Okay. How many how many parking spots do you have there before you re, uh, negotiate something new? How many do I have marked right now? Is that what you're asking me? Well, I I don't know about marked, but how many how many like before you renew that? or adjust that lease to acquire some more space in that. Like I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how with, many. With, uh, with, with Janine's drawing and with, uh, with her help to make sure that it, it's, it applies with the proper measurements and spaces, distances between vehicles, right. we, have, uh, we have over 70. Over 70, okay. Yeah. Um, so I wanna ask you too about there's, I, th I think it's a lift station, like a sewage lift station as you as you go on to that leased area like the cpr lands mm -hmm. there like before you get to the least like and i don't know if kevin you might be able to answer this but the there's a chunk of property that goes from government road basically to the lift station it appears like the cp lands that are in some of your diagrams start there and carry on from there is that where the where the bridge from between the bridge and the pump house yeah, we, we we have never given permission for anybody to park there. I don't honestly do not know who they are, and they definitely do not have any two bears parking passes on their mirrors. Okay, I didn't I didn't look for parking passes, but I did notice there was about a dozen vehicles that are sort of squeezing out onto Government Road, and when I went and did that site visit, uh, I personally believe that, that that those people may think that it's been grandfathered in for years and years and years because they've always been there. But that's my personal opinion. Nothing to do with it. So they could be connected to to you know boats or people that are renting from you, but you don't like that's not something that's uh, 
that you're renting that space or including in any of your numbers? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, and, and just, uh, and this is for John Barr. John, the, the area was 2.77 acres. If you read the lease that uh, between CP and, and two bears, it was 2.77 acres. Um, okay, I think that's all the questions I have. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Dirksen. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Ray Dirksen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess many, if not all of the questions that I've had have uh, come up already. Um, but uh, if I could get uh, some clarification, uh, Brad, you something caught my ear when you were talking about uh, the MNR. Uh, you mentioned you had a uh, lease with the MNR, and we've uh, a couple of members, PAC members, have had some concerns with the fact that there's no environmental assessment or MNR haven't done any appear to have done any work with respect to wildlife and spawning concerns. However, you mentioned you had a lease with them. I guess my question is both to you and Kevin is how come that lease with the MNR was not part of our package for uh, review? Can anyone answer that? That's, maybe we should address that to Kevin. Uh, yeah, it, it, we didn't require a copy of uh, the leases uh, associated with the property. Uh, the applicant did voluntarily in, include a copy of the Two Bears Marina lease with their application. Um, we weren't aware of any other leases uh, affecting the property in question. I, I don't think there, you know, can I, I can comment. I had, uh, I, I I don't know that there's any environmental impacts because I've done work on the lake before outside of this that requires uh, we have we have a, we have numerous waterfront uh, lot leases with the MNR, uh, including First Avenue South, uh, outside of the Muskie Point Marina. I don't believe Main Street does because we own that and part of Salisbury owns theirs also, but there's never, honestly, there's never been any environmental impact assessment done, whether it needs it or not, I'm not sure. But. Well, I guess that, that was one of my concerns is, uh, in my opinion, I believe it, it should be done. I mean, I grew up down there, so did you, Brad. And uh, yeah. we all know that there's, there's uh, fish spawning in there, whether it's bass or Northern Pike, we know there's significant uh, wetlands in there. There's there's numerous types of birds and all all that other good stuff. But uh, I, I'm just I'm just concerned that there doesn't appear to be any uh, documentation with with environment and or CPR. Um, I guess I'm getting into uh, opinions versus questions right now. But I'll I'll back up the train and go back to questions. Um, uh, Mr. McDougall did talk about the uh, boats moored in the bay and the fact that they're, they're I guess, the responsibility of the MNR. But could you clarify, Brad, if if you actually rent parking parking spots for those boaters that are moored in the bay? I believe there's no, no, no. As I clear, as I think I mentioned before, we do not rent any parking spots to anybody to, to anybody who does not have a docking slip with us okay so no. so how do those people how do those people access those those boats are they they're obviously they're not accessing from your docks then no i didn't want to yeah they access it on their on their own and uh i, I think maybe a yeah that's all I can say. I, we do not grant access to anybody to those boats. Okay. They, they, they do get it though. Okay. Can you, can you also clarify where do all the visitors and guests of all these boaters end up parking? We've, so, we've substantially decreased the number of like, of, uh, of guest parking that these people are accustomed to. And the two bears customers who have been there for the last 40 years, because it was Mar Bars and Mars and Shermans and Two Bears uh, have always been 
you know, very little, if any, guest parking. The, uh, the, the people down at the Public Works, we do have a couple of uh, guest parking spots, but nothing like they're used to. So it, the, it's not docking. You know, do, I know the docking spot is the big issue. Right? The docking spaces are a big issue right now. But parking remains the biggest issue, as well as docking with all of us, for all of us. Okay, Mr. Chair. Good. Uh, members, anybody else? Anybody want to add? Anybody got any other questions? Uh, we move. Well, go ahead, Deb. Hi, I just wanted, we were talking about how many uh, boat slips and parking stalls. And on your site plan, I just wanted to bring up that the number of parking stalls it says 283 and the number of boat slips, two, 270. And that's in the report as a site plan. So if anybody needed that information, that's where it is. Thank you. Thank you. John Barr. A uh, quick question for Kevin. I'm not sure. How does a marina, or how does dockage, commercial dockage, get permitted, permitted in in Kenora? Uh, well, uh, through uh, there is a there is a permit requirement for the docks themselves at the discretion of our chief building official, and that's been required since 2015. I understand. Uh, Prior to that date, there was uh, some turbulent years of sorting out who was responsible for issuing permits for the docks themselves. All docks are subject to site plan control approval. So uh, uh, just uh, like I mentioned for this dock, uh, any new docks that are being established uh, need to apply for site plan control approval from the city as well. Uh, now, site specific, there may be zoning or variances or other, cons uh, other uh, approvals that come into play. But those two are the basic uh, requirements that someone will encounter when uh, proposing new docks in the city. Now, we, you know, accessory docks for individual residences, uh, if they're accessory to a use on site, that uh, uh, can often be a little bit more straightforward. But uh, if it's a commercial property or industrial property, it's still going to be, it's going to require site plan control approval. Uh, it's just residences that wouldn't require that as long as they meet our other zoning regulations pertaining to docks. So what you're saying is through a building permit? Uh, so the actual construction of the docks, uh, the permit can be required at the discretion of the chief building official, yes. Even, even over uh, a water law? Yeah, and then now MNRF may have their own requirements pertaining to water lots and I won't uh, I, I won't speak for them in terms of when they may determine that uh, land use permits uh, may be required or not. But uh, from the city side, uh, yes, if it's associated with a piece of property on the land, uh, then there's going to be a, a permit requirement. Now, when you get to, you know, when you get away from the docks and get the boats and, uh, and houseboats moored in the middle of the bay, then that gets away from my authority under the zoning bylaw and that gets purely MNRF. But if it's a dock attached to land, uh, we need to approve it. And it's so we don't know. So we don't. We don't know. But I can guess. We don't know if I had a big, big barge with a, with um, sleeping quarters on it. If I went down the lake and stuck it in a bay and put an anchor down and sat there forever, went back and forth every weekend, nobody would care. Um, you know, uh, yeah, if, if it's, if, yeah, just the, the, the craft itself, no, that's not something we regulate. Uh, it's just the docks. Yeah. I, what I'm getting at is in, in, in the Bay, Portage Bay or Kuwaitan Bay, you have craft, um, watercraft moored there on probably crown land. They're probably, they're probably not water lots, crown land. And there doesn't seem to be anything anybody can do. We've, we've brought those to the attention of MNRF when they were brought to our attention by uh, individuals commenting on these, uh, these applications. Uh, so I, I, I certainly hope that MNRF will follow up on, on those and ensuring that they are properly permitted. Uh, but I don't know where they're at in that. Okay, uh, just another quick question for Brad. Brad, mm -hmm. you don't... Um... You don't have any sewage pump outs or anything associated with the marinas, except maybe on the on the uh, the main building on the I guess it's the south side. We have the two bear site that has a uh, yeah an approved pump out system. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. 
let's um, let's move to discussion. And um, Robert, could you open it? <clears throat> yeah, no problem, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, not much for discussion. Just two points. One to add to Tannis's point. Uh, we've heard the word, uh, it, uh, the the verbiage of it's not minor and that type of stuff. So just to rem maybe remind, uh, I know the members of the committee will certainly know this, but maybe those in the public or those that have concerns. So that the minor is not just a number. It's it's supposed to be a subjective view of the application by each member of the app uh, of the committee. So when we see uh, the planning report. And it's uh, Kevin's opinion that it's minor. It then becomes the committee's uh, members' opinion if it's, it's minor, and then eventually then uh, council themselves. So I just wanted to remind those in the public that that's the definition of minor isn't just a, a numeric value. It's a subjective opinion of the applicant. The other one, too, that I just wanted to mention, and, and although I can sympathize with those that have concerns with the speed and and the parking problems on the street and uh, certainly the speed should not be really uh, the applicant's obligation. There's nothing really stopping me from taking my boat down there and, and speeding. So I don't know if less dock slips makes slower uh, uh, traffic. So those were my only comments for discussions for the applications, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Let's go to Ray. Let's do you next. Sorry for the delay there, Mr. Chair. Just unmuting. Um, yeah, with comment to minor, I it is subjective, and I guess in my opinion, I don't believe it's minor in nature. I I believe the the development is excessive for the for the small site that it's on. Um, I'm not against uh, additional docking. I, I understand the fact that we need it in the community. We need it all over. Um, uh, people want to access the lake and, and uh, spend money in our community. That's all good things. But I think the, I think the scope of the project should fit the, the, the property it's on and, and uh, maybe it should be smaller. You know, I'm not saying it shouldn't be there. It just should maybe be smaller. Um, I have concerns with the fact that CPR isn't uh, providing comments. I have concerns that MNR isn't. Uh, it doesn't appear that they're on board here with comments. Um, uh, I'm not satisfied with the process at all. I, I think the, the, the city, I'll say city, is, is just trying to fix something that, that uh, should have been look at, looked after and enforced a long time ago. So as it stands right now, I'm not in favor. Okay, thank you. Tannis, we'll go to you. I keep uh, flipping back to the application and uh, reminding myself we, we have two things here to look at. And, and what we're looking at right now is the parking. Um, <clears throat> I don't see issue with, with the parking. Um, the concern is the safety crossing the road. And that's been addressed in the report as a, um, a study is going to be requested and remediation action is going to be requested. <clears throat> so in terms of this application regarding the parking, um, I, I'm, I'm satisfied at this moment. Bev, we'll move to you. Thank you. I agree totally with what Ray said. Absolutely, I do. And I think in the evaluation, I believe it's gonna affect the whole area I think the parking is just not enough and there's only so much milk you can pour in a glass and then it spills over. And that's what's gonna happen there because there's people who will be bringing some family members, there's gonna be extra vehicles and they're gonna be parked all over. And the concern of crossing the road and Wayne is absolutely correct with CPR not having any comments in, um, in our report. Um, they have always commented, even in land titles, we always had a comment from CPR. So I would feel more comfortable as well having something in uh, just a record of, of them speaking uh, to the matter. So um, that, that's my comments. Yeah, I, I'm uh, not in agreement with this at all. Thank you. John, oh, sorry. Um, okay, go ahead, Robert, go ahead. Hey, thanks, Mr. Chair. I just, uh, thanks for allowing me to jump in. I, 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 I would have to agree, and it would be of my opinion that CP must be in favor of this application. They're the ones that submitted it. 
And in fact, I believe it's two bears that is actually acting as the planning an agent. So just, I would, it would be my intentions or thought that maybe CP is not commenting because they're the applicant and maybe they think it's almost a conflict of interest to uh, uh, speak of their own application. So I, I don't know if we should be, we should be cautious on be, uh, worrying about why CP hasn't said anything when in fact the applicant is in their name. They're the actual applicant. And I believe Two Bears is the planning agent for it. So I, I think we should maybe get some clarification on that, maybe Mr. Chair. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, John Barr. Yes, thank you, uh, Wayne. Um, uh, Ms. Neal and Mr. Moncrief raised a good point in it. And I, I, I have to apologize because we're being asked to, to assess an individual application in isolation with a number of other things that may be going on. And you raise, you raise the point of, um, of basically the physical and environmental capacity of, of, of the bay, Portage Bay. And I mean, it's got a lot of, res it's very highly developed. It's got a lot of residential properties on it. It's got commercial properties industrial properties, the stud mill, I would I'd venture to guess the bottom of the bay has a lot of wood waste on it. Um, there's not much flow through the bay. Uh, the bay flows to the, um, actually to the west. Uh, those, those of you that live there know uh, near the ball diamonds, the, old, the ball diamonds and the rec center on the other side, side there. Sometimes there's no flow at all because that, that structure can be closed off or opened up. So we're, but there's not much, as a committee, we can do about assessing the capacity of the bay environmentally. That's that's up to, I don't know who, but it's up to somebody. And given that you raised other developments at the rec center that the town might be doing or other docking areas, um, unfortunately, we have to look at this in isolation. As far as the CPR crossing, see, I, I, I don't see it the way maybe, uh, uh, as far as the safety, it's a controlled crossing. It's got lights, it's got, I think it has a barrier and, and it's got sound. Um, there are literally hundreds of controlled crossings across the country, maybe thousands. And they're controlled for pedestrian use and vehicular use. Um, I would venture a guess there's lots of controlled crossings in this province where there'll be a lot more people cross, where a lot more people Cross the crossing than we'll ever cross the, uh, the crossing to go to that dock space. The fact is, anybody that's docking there will pull their car up, drop the family and goods off, drive the car back to the, uh, to the old Q8 in the yard, and then walk up back to the boat and take off. Um, so, and in my mind, um, any increase in parking is simply going to alleviate any issues you have in parking in other sites. Um, so I, I, I mean, I'm not sure you can support the parking application without supporting the marina application. Um, I did a little research on marina permits and MNR. As I said before, they were permitted under the um, Public Lands Act. That changed in uh, 2018, I think. And why I asked this, the, the question about the area, if the, if, if the marine, if the docking takes up more than 50 square meters, and I guess this is tested in court, then it requires a permit under the Public Lands Act. My sense is where the docks come up to the land, um, you don't exceed 15 square meters. I, I may be wrong about that. Um, the other thing is, given that, given that the lands on which the parking is, proposed for are already zoned industrial, uh, parking lots are permitted there. And I'm not sure where the conflict is between the parking lot for the for docking and a parking lot um, for other reasons. And as John said a few meetings back, uh, people won't rent a boat set up unless there's acceptable parking. For it. it just won't happen. It's like anything else. If you can't get to it, you're not going to use it. So. I will probably, I would probably support this particular application. Thank you. John McDougall. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I sort of echo the thoughts uh, in, that Bev and uh, 
Ray have provided. This, it seems like it's overdeveloped uh, for the size of the property. Um, you know, just even coming and going, it's an awkward intersection. If you're trying to make a left turn uh, to get to town, uh, there's, it, it's awkward because you're already sort of almost beyond the, the area that you can sort of stop and wait for the single lane bridge traffic to, to come and go. Um, it just everything about it's awkward. You know, just when I did a site visit, um, there's vehicles that are sort of squeezing out beyond that, uh, um, uh, that pump house or that uh, lift station uh, out almost right out onto government road. Um, there's vehicles that are parked on government road, like in the area of the, uh, uh, the old public works yard. And, and I don't know what they're attached to. They could be people that are totally detached from, from this, but, um, we're just adding more traffic. We're adding more, uh, things going on in that area. And, you know, I do agree with, uh, John Barr, the likelihood is you pull in, you drop your, your things, uh, uh, for your to your boat or to the nearest dock, uh, if you don't have a spot in that uh, sort of uh, CPR area, then you go across and and uh, to 80 Government Road and park your vehicle in there. And I was there on a weekday, and and uh, I I think you'd be hard pressed to get another vehicle in there. I know it's summertime, so there's lots of uh, uh, people in the area and summer holidays and whatnot. But uh, you know that that area is full. Um, when I was in that area, drove, took a drive through that yard. Uh, I don't know. I just, it, I, I feel like there's a, a, you know, additional foot traffic and vehicle traffic, uh, people going left, right, uh, a shuttle that's going to be operating in a, in a pretty awkward, uh, location. And, uh, and it's a, it's a long hike. If you, uh, are walking from the, uh, to and from the, the new docks, the 72 that were attached, uh, you know, sometime last fall or what have you, it's a long hike, you know, so you're not, um, you know, you're going to probably want to take that shuttle. I don't know if that shuttle works seven days a week, uh, uh, 24 hours a day or, or extended hours. Like, I don't know anything about that, but I think, um, you know, from my perspective, I want to be, uh, I think we should be cautious about how much traffic we're adding into the area um, just for, for the simple uh, safety uh, perspective that, that, you know, and, and problems and uh, congestion that we might create there um, because it is an awkward uh, single lane bridge. It, it, the, the rail crossing two tracks, they're right there. And yeah, for sure. It's a, uh, um, uh, a controlled intersection for vehicles, but foot traffic have the ability to skip across the tracks and maybe make it and, yeah. you know, ahead of a train or what have you. But anyway, that, those are just some of my comments. And, and, uh, I, you know, I appreciate the challenge that, that people that are looking for boat slips, um, because another Marine is closed or because, you know, there's a situation where, people that maybe had uh, road access don't have road access now. And I realize that those are all challenges, but I don't think uh, we should put those um, things ahead of, uh, you know, uh, good solid development and, and uh, ahead of uh, safety and whatnot, just to, to accommodate a uh, situation. Maybe there's other options in other uh, areas in the Kenora area that people can find docking. I'm not sure, but because I haven't looked for a spot. So, but I, I appreciate the challenge people have, but uh, I also appreciate the, the challenge that residents that are living there um, and, and moving around the area all the time uh, are going to find with, uh, uh, you know, having this added number of boat slips and, uh, and added parking and added challenge to their day-to-day -day life. So that, those are my comments. Thank you. Okay. So my comments are, um, again, I still think I've heard what we've talked about with CPR. I still think CPR have an obligation to provide us with comments regarding the crossing. 
Um, I think that uh, their opinion would be valuable to us. Um, I think hiring an engineer without knowing what the expectations may be. Um, again, I, I think that we might learn a lot by simply hearing what CPR has to say about the crossing. Not their lawyer, their people that, that look after the crossings. Um, I'm struggling with the minor variants. I'm not convinced that, like, I'm having a hard time accepting that that's minor. Um, I, I do want to make a suggestion, and I just want to see what the committee, I just want to, there's a lot of unanswered questions. There isn't a single person on the committee uh, that hasn't brought questions forward that I don't think they believe they've got a real solid answer for. Um, I, I would like to make a suggestion, and again, I'm not, I'm just, this is a suggestion versus a motion. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to suggest that maybe we put this over for 30 days and we try to get some answers on some of the questions that I've heard that really have not been answered tonight. Robert, go ahead. So, Mr. Chair, I, I could appreciate some of the other PACs members have the concerns, but Really, the application is just about allowing the parking to be more than 90 meters away and in a different uh, location, like in a different zone. So we have done this in the past, not saying that we should just rubber stamp it because we've done it in the past, but we have, there have been other minor variances that allow for parking to be more than 90 meters away from the business. And I could even argue the fact that even at uh, Anishinaabe Park, the city built uh, extra parking at the old dump location, which is way more than 90 meters, even though they don't need the parking because there's no dock spots, but they, they saw the need for additional parking. So they moved it more than 90 meters. I, I think maybe we should be looking at the application, not the, uh, not the, how maybe they did it incorrectly. They didn't pull permits to do the job. I, I could argue that traffic might get better that if we allow them to park uh, on leased land, uh, maybe the traffic will be better. Maybe people won't be driving around looking for a spot. But this could be a solution that maybe some of us are looking at it as a problem. And that's just my take on it, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I still believe that with, with the name CPR on the application, I, I would think that they would not spend hundreds of dollars uh, to invest on an application that they didn't believe in. As wasteful as they might be as an organization, I'm sure that they wouldn't do that, Mr. Chair. Again, just my opinion, but thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead, John. John Bart. And to back up what Robert said, like looking at the control crossing, like. I'm not too sure, short of an overhead walkway, beyond extra signage and maybe some, some painting on the pavement, what you're going to achieve with, with an engineer. That's, that's simply what he'll say, put extra signage up and uh, unless you want to spend a million dollars on an overhead walkway. And um, as I said, it's a controlled, it's a controlled crossing. There's, tons, there's hundreds of them. Uh, people cross them every day. Um, Probably some are, are uh, far, um, far more complex than that one. But in any case, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Go ahead, Bev. I would just like to add that I don't know that I'm necessarily concerned. I am concerned about the trains, but it's the vehicular traffic. I mean, they're coming and going. You have to wait. and People are just walking out. They're not even. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Um, they're just walking out into the traffic. They're not paying attention. They're going to be all excited to get to the car or get to the, to the, uh, to the lake or whatever. So that's a big concern. And there's going to be a lot of people there. So it's a concern of mine. Thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead, John McDougall. Sure. I, I would just, you know, just from, um, like thinking outside the box, like, if you were developing that piece of property today, and Kevin, you might be able to offer some, uh, you know, some input on this, but if you're developing that piece of property today, it was vacant and you wanted to put in, 
you know, the better part of 280 boat slips and, um, you know, 149 parking stalls, would you get an, in, would, if you applied for, do you think you'd be successful getting an entrance permit? Because I know how uh, on a, I, I live in rural uh, Kenora and, and I, you know, apply for uh, uh, an entrance permit for my driveway and it's, and it's, you know, we got to shuffle it over this way or that way. And there's just a few cars a day that are going on the road. And so I'm wondering like, you know, what would that look like in, in, in today's uh, situation? And, um, and are we sort of just fueling or just sort of uh, perpetuating the problem? You know, maybe, um, you know what I'm, I'm just sort of thinking in, in, a, in a different um, from a different perspective, like what would that look like if you were starting fresh today, uh, you know, even from the city side? In terms of an entrance permit, I, I'm a bit hesitant to speak on behalf of our roads department. There's a lot of factors that come into play on, on something like that. It does, it does tend to be a little bit easier in low speed situations. In rural areas, you're often dealing with people who driving at rural road speeds and uh, we got a lot of twisty roads around here where sight lines become really critical uh, especially on narrow roads uh, this is a fairly low speed intersection uh, there's a, certainly some visibility issues uh, uh, but uh, so it, it it's it, I, I I'd say it's 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 likely that a permit would be considered in a situation like this. The, there might be mitigative you know, improvements or something like that required, but uh, I'm hesitant to go beyond saying, you know, you know, these are my observations as a planner that works with uh, engineers and uh, roads departments, not the, the, not the guy that's got to actually sign the permit. Tannis? I guess I would remind everybody and draw their attention that roads division did um, have a uh, opportunity to comment and their comment was no concerns. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, Ray Pearson, go ahead. We're waiting on you, Ray. It looks like Ray's in trouble. Ray, you can't, are you okay? Can't get your sound on? Okay, well, let's, um, well, well, Ray's trying to sort himself out there. You can hear me, Ray? Maybe, Mr. Chair, maybe Adam can unmute him if he's the, uh, or the host. That might be an option. Or if Ray, if you can hear me, you, if you're running two monitors, you need to click your mouse on the monitor and then unmute or control A. Or push and hold your space bar. That'll allow you to talk temporarily. Or jump on two feet and run around in circles. Yeah, I can't um, uh, intentionally get him to uh, unmute. I can ask him to. Uh, but I think Wayne, maybe just carry on. Okay. All right. So, um, so at this point, and now this is going to be about Ray. Um, I'm going to put a motion forward that we put this over to the next meeting till we are able to get some answers, get more information, um, and again. Um, just so that we can sort some of this stuff out. I'm going to ask if I have a second. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Chair, I finally fixed it. <laughs> okay. Um, hold on a sec. Anyways, if, if oh. I could just if I could just comment before you make your motion there, I just I just think we're missing the the, the bigger picture here. I mean, we're being asked to vote on a minor variance of of uh, the distance that they have to walk from the marina to their potential parking spot. But the bigger picture is the fact that we've got an, uh, a, 
a development that exceeds the, the the land space that we have and and the the amount of parking that's available. Um, I think we have to look at at the whole project in a, in the whole, not just the fact that they have to walk an extra fifty or hundred meters. That's my concern. So that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So I'm going to proceed with a motion that we delay the decision for 30 days to the next meeting. Do I have a seconder? I do not have a seconder, so that is defeated. Oh, okay. sorry. Well, okay. Do you want me to? Okay. So so okay. let's back up. So Bev, have you seconded that motion? Well, I can second it if you're, is, is, and that's to put it over till next month. That was the motion and you were having some problems with, okay. So once again, the motion is, is that we put it over for 30 days. Okay. You'll have a seconder. Okay, let's vote. Uh, Mr. Chair, I believe Bev was going to be the, the seconder. If uh, before we call the vote, if we can call a if I can make call a, a point of our point of order and call the question first or ask a question first. Sorry. So, Mr. Chair, before I believe Bev was the seconder, she can confirm. But before you call the question, I would like to ask a question at a point of order, if that's okay with you, Mr. Chair. First. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, thanks. So, if we are going to defer. I think that the motion should state why why we're deferring and what questions we would want to have answered uh, so that the motion is very clear, possibly. Again, my opinion, Mr. Chair. Your motion, but my opinion. Okay, John Barr. And further to that, are we deferring both applications or just, just the parking application? Because one yeah, kind of fits with the other. The, ap the application that's on the table, yeah. Just the parking. Just, just, just the one that we're dealing with right now, application D13 2109. Okay. You and, know what? I'm going to pull it. I'm, I'm going to I change my mind. I think we'll vote on it tonight and get rid of it. Okay. How would that be? Okay. My motion, my motion is the, okay. So I'm going to ask for a show of hands. Seeing none, that motion is defeated. So I'm going to move ahead to um, Melissa. Could you read the um, the resolution, please? Sure, I can. The resolution and the recommendation is made within the planning report is as such, that the application D13-2109 to seek relief from the City of Kenora Zoning Bylaw 101-2015 section 3.23 parking provisions to allow for the required parking spaces to be supplied off-site within 410 meters of the main pedestrian access of the building for which the parking spaces are required for uses in the tourist recreational, residential first density, and heavy industrial zones meets the four tests and should be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that Two Bears Marina enter into a lease agreement with the City of Kenora that includes all the land at the former Kewitt Public Works Yard, 80 Government Road, being used for parking and storage. And two, that the Canadian Pacific Railway and or Two Bears Marina engage an independent traffic engineer to prepare a rail and road crossing study that includes recommendations as to any remedial measures that may be required to ensure pedestrian safety at the Government Road rail crossing and make any recommended, recommended improvements to the satisfaction of the city to ensure pedestrian safety in crossing the road and railway tracks between the marina site and the parking lot at the former Kuwait and Public Works Yard. Thank you. Okay, um, so I need somebody to um, do a motion, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make motion that the uh, Planning Advisory Committee uh, approve application D13-2109 as read by the Secretary Treasurer. Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you. Seconder? Oops, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I'll second. Panis? Panis will second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Two, three. I see three hands raised. I see Robert Kutowski, 
John Barr and Thomas McIntosh. That's a defeated vote. So that vote has been defeated. Um, okay, so um, Melissa, we'll hand it over to you then, right? Yeah. So the application for minor variance D13-2109 has been defeated here this evening. Brad Dirksen through to you, representing the agent, Mr. Chia and the owner of CP Rail. You will receive notice of the um, decision here this evening by Thursday. It will be subject to an appeal that will take us to August the 8th, 2021. Thank you. Um, everybody okay to just move on? We're good. Okay, we'll move on to D13-2110, two bears. And Kevin, we'll, we'll hand it over to you. Yes, so, so this one, uh, this application is specific to the property with no assigned address identified as the right of way and station grounds of uh, Canadian Pacific Railway uh, in Kenora. So that is the property on the north side of uh, Portage Bay there. Uh, and the, it's an application for permission to expand the legally non-conforming use uh, for that property. And the effect of the approval would be to allow uh, uh, for a 72 lots, uh, 72 dock slip expansion to the existing marina on the subject property, uh, which was undertaken without permits or planning approval. So the applicant has, uh, as I mentioned before, expanded that marina without obtaining those approvals. And uh, this application must be approved or the applicant will need to remove the unpermitted dock slips. Uh, there are currently 166 dock slips um, uh, on the legally non-conforming marina to which the applicants have added an additional 72 dock slips a uh, number of additional slips have been added by the applicant for the use of DTL contracting, which have not been included in the applicant's request for permission. So uh, the, this, to be clear, this would be to approve the 72 slips on the east side of that point of land, but this does not grant approval for those uh, on the south uh, uh, you know, point of the, uh, on the south <laughs> edge of that point. Uh, the applicants claim to have 149 existing parking stalls on the property on the north side of the bay with an additional 36 being proposed with the expansion. Additional parking spaces uh, were proposed to be located at the offsite at the former Q8 and public works yard uh, with the defeat of the minor variance uh, that is no longer an option for the applicants. So there's sketches there indicating the location of the, in my report, uh, indicating the location of the subject property and the sketch submitted along with some photos of the docking and the associated parking on uh, both the, the site and the uh, and 80 government road. So in terms of consistency with legislative policy and directives, uh, in regards to the provincial policy statement, the proposed expansion of the legally non-conforming use is generally consistent with the policies encourage land use patterns within settlement areas based on a mix of land uses, which efficiently use land and resources are appropriate for and efficiently use available infrastructure and public service facilities. Uh, planning authorities are also to promote economic development and competitiveness by providing opportunities for a diversified economic base. In terms of the city of Kenora's official plan, the land use designation, as I mentioned in my previous report, is industrial development area. Adjacent properties are mostly established area with the exception of the parks on Boat Lift Road and McLean Avenue. Uh, section 8.3.1 of the official plan sets out uh, policies in regards to non-conforming uses and being specifically A, legally existing uses that do not comply with the land use designations outlined in the plan may be zoned to permit the continuation of the use and may provide for limited expansion provided that development policies of the plan are met. And B, where a non-conforming use changes, the new use shall be in keeping with the intent of this plan. Section 3.6 of the plan sets out policies relating to development and proximity to rail lines and rail yards. Uh, it, and I covered that in my previous report in regards to its statement about negative impacts on the, and to uh, mitigative safety measures. Section 3.13.3 .3 sets out policies regarding docks and shoreline development. It states in part that docks, waterfront and marine structures on property abutting water shall one, be subject to policies of the MNRF, the Canadian Coast Guard, Fisheries and Oceans and the City of Kenora. Two, be designed, constructed and maintained in a manner which contributes to the amenity of the city. 
Three, be capable of withstanding damaging storms, ice, and high water conditions. Four, not contain sanitary facilities, pressurized water systems, or dwelling units. Five, be located so as not to interfere with navigation or aids to navigation. Six, be constructed and placed so as to minimize the impact on natural vegetation and topography and shall not have a negative impact on natural heritage features such as fish habitat, wildlife habitat, habit of, habitat of endangered and threatened species and wetlands. And seven, be constructed to meet the requirements of the Ontario Regulation RO 1990 Marinas under the Environmental Protection Act in the case of marinas. Commercial uses on the shoreline are to be designed to be compatible with surrounding uses. Developments which contribute to the tourism industry are to be encouraged. In terms of the zoning bylaw, as I mentioned previously, this, zone, this property is zoned MH and HL. Uh, section 3.21.1A2 states that a legally non-compliant building or structure may be enlarged or extended provided the situation of non-compliance is not further increased and it complies with all other provisions of the bylaw. The proposed marina expansion does not currently satisfy that criteria as it does not conform to the parking requirements of the bylaw. If the concurrent application for minor variance is approved, the parking requirements may be met by development of parking at the former 28 and public yard, the works yard. And as I discussed or uh, you know, mentioned in the discussion on the previous application, with that minor variance being rejected, uh, that it will, they will need to meet all their parking requirements on site. Uh, so they're certainly, uh, you know, free to do that within the physical capacity of that property uh, with that key criteria being one parking space per docking slip. Uh, so uh, uh, based on the site plan they submitted, the, they would be able to actually expand only 19 spaces. It's possible that they may be able to reconfigure that site plan and certainly welcome them to work with us uh, achieving compliance. Uh, it does appear that it would be difficult for them to meet the parking requirement for the full additional 72 slips. In regards to interdepartmental agency circulation, uh, just uh, the, this is identical to the comments that were received in regards to the previous application as we uh, submit as we circulated them concurrently. So I'll move past that to uh, public comments uh, section. Uh, so the no circulation of the notice of complete application and hearing was uh, uh, circulated in accordance with section 45 of the Planning Act. And uh, as of the date of the report, uh, uh, as I mentioned with the previous report, we'd responded to several inquiries about these applications and uh, received email submissions. Uh, we've since received additional submissions, both for and against, which were included in the package, uh, in, the, in the agenda package for the committee. In terms of evaluation, section 3.15.5 of the plan states that new development shall be assessed on compatibility with the established community and ability to coexist with existing development without causing undue adverse impact on surrounding properties. Some concern has been expressed on compliance with official plan section 8.3.1, non-conforming uses in the limited development provision. The most significant factor in limiting expansion of the subject property is the ability to provide adequate parking for the proposed use. And I'll amend my uh, comments here based on uh, the recent uh, decision uh, by the committee. Uh, and so uh, I've, the, the latter part of that paragraph, I would replace with my previous comments uh, in this report regarding the effects of the uh, decline minor variance. The unpermitted barging operation and associated docking has not been included in this application and must be removed to achieve compliance with the zoning bylaw. This permission, and, uh, and, I, and I, I realized in uh, reading that, that uh, the, uh, the owner of DTL Contracting has uh, claimed that the, the, the barging is not the exclusive use of that business or not part of the use of that business. Uh, it doesn't affect the fact that there is no site plan control or permits issued for those docks and they are non-compliant with the, the zoning bylaw and the site plan control bylaw. This permission, if approved, will allow for expansion of the marina uh, to include up to 72 additional parking slips, uh, parking uh, provided. Uh, the development must, must also receive site plan control approval as required under the site plan control bylaw number 189-2010. That approval requires that the applicant submit site plan, including the, that indicating that the marina expansion complies with all relevant regulations of the zoning bylaw. This concludes such requirements as sufficient number of parking spaces, parking uh, spaces and aisles size to minimum standards, provision of accessible parking space, 
adequate drainage and surfacing and adequate areas for outdoor storage of boats. Other marinas in the city appear to be able to function with the one-one ratio of uh, boat slips to parking spaces without significant negative impact to surrounding properties and neighborhoods. Therefore, it is reasonable to expect that if the property is otherwise brought into compliance with the zoning bylaw regulation, there is no reason to believe that this application for permission for expansion of the non-complying use will have any significant negative impact on the established community and approval is therefore recommended. So my recommendation is specifically that the planning advisory committee takes into consideration those comments that may yet be received and the application D13-21-10 to seek permission for expansion of a legally non-complying marina to include up to an additional 72 boat slips should be approved subject to the following conditions. A, that Two Bears Marina Incorporate obtain building permits for the new docks on the subject property owned by Canadian Pacific Railway. B, that Two Bears Marina Incorporated remove all unpermitted docks from the subject property owned by Canadian Pacific Railway and see that approvals from the Ministry of Natural Resources are provided for an expansion to the land use permit to indicate the, to include the marina expansion. That concludes my report. Thank you, Kevin. Um, Brad, we'll come to you. Do you have anything you want to add at this time? Uh, I don't have a whole lot, Wayne. Just I'm a little bit disappointed in the last uh, results. So yeah. I, uh, let's, uh, let's move forward and see how it works so you've got nothing okay you're fine at that point okay yeah. um i'm gonna ask if there's anybody from the public that wants to speak in favor of at this time and again i'd like to remind you that you've got five minutes and um please state your name and your address so go ahead doug uh doug long owner of dtl carpentry uh, box 44 Q8 in Ontario, POX 1C0. Um, same as Brad, our whole industry is based on tourism. Um, the part that was just read, development was contributed to the tourist industry. I don't know how that last vote couldn't have slammed that, um, as in anti tourism. There was a few points that were made for last time. We talk about uh, congested corners. I'll use Gould Road and Railway Street. Almost the same angles of approach, higher traffic volume, yet that road operates fine with minimal uh, instances or crashes or situations. Um, has there been any issues this year so far actually with any traffic accidents in that intersection? There has been none. So when we bring up the points about the intersection being bad for the parking, uh, yeah, hard to hard to say, I guess. Um, back to I guess our point about the additional dock parking. I never actually put it in the application. So if the actual dock are there, how do we like? Is that just not the same where we go, okay, I have to apply for the permit or I recontact two bears to have this put in. So from the rent per user, I'm sort of kind of left in the dark as in now all of a sudden the area that I happen to be occupying and using is now all of a sudden cut off the list, whereas it's just not something that uh, I guess what's, what's the avenue of approaching that? And then when the city wants to look at advancing and maintaining towards tourism, Again, now we're, we're removing a spot that we stage out of. So again, here we are losing another access point that uh, contractors are supposed to use in the city, yet we, we get, they get terminated. Um, yeah, as far as uh, m &R, uh, I deal with m and lots in Clearwater Bay. If you've ever actually gone and looked at our pier that we have built there, our landing, um, when it was drilled, the water was lower. None of our pipes are actually on the bottom of the lake. So as John Barr mentioned about how much you're occupying on the bottom, the amount of pipes that we occupy on the land don't qualify for enough coverage. The rest of our structure is actually potentially floating on top. Um, the docks, the floating docks that we use there, we actually reuse a lot of the garbage that would have gone to the landfill that had come into that bay. So those of us that are talking about the loons and the ducks and you know environmentally concerned, we basically refurbish those docks instead of them going to the Silver Lake or uh, to the Jones Road. 
we ended up reusing them for our facility. And then again, we come back to, I would say I mentioned, the site is still zoned industrial. So given that it's industrial with commercial use, I would definitely say that what we're doing there meets all those requirements. So I would definitely like the opportunity to properly apply so that we could have this actually, well, so we can do business together again, for lack of a better word. So that's all I have on that. Well, actually I did one more point, sorry, back to call, Colleen's point about the speed in the bay. Okay. Um, and I take that seriously. So uh, if you were, when you leave, uh, when you leave the marina and you go out, that red marker is where the first and last speed limit sign actually is. There is none on the bridge. So when we leave, the guys, you know, we're instructed, when you see those signs, you have to slow down. So at that red marker, and you look over to the stud mill, that is actually the point where the last signage is. So if, if there is more concerns about that, then maybe more signage should be put actually on the bridge. So people who aren't from Kuwait and don't understand the common courtesy of waiting to the bridge, they just may not know that. So they may be getting kind of falsely looped into this without when they're thinking they're actually applying by the rules. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else to speak in favor of? I see no others. Anybody to speak against? I see nobody. Yes, Joan, I'm Joan Ortley. Oh, okay. Go ahead, John. Box 554, Kuwaitan. I honestly don't know how this can be approved if they don't have enough parking spots. Perhaps they should downsize the docks and so they have enough parking. Um, the parking issue is a serious one. Um, I'm quite pleased with John McDougall's um, comments. That coming out of there is I've lived here all my life and there's lots of issues with coming out of that particular spot. You can't see a lot of times on that bridge. So the more parking, I mean, the more people going off from the parking onto the bridge is it's just, again, a terrible, a terrible location. So without the extra parking, I don't see how you can have the marina expanded to 72 docks or 72 boating slips. Perhaps they should look at reducing that. The DTL thing is, I get, I get not part of this particular motion, but again, I, I agree with his comments in terms of the fact that it is an industrial area. What they've done has improved the site and they are not an issue. We can see their, from our house, we can see their docks and stuff and, and they, they're not in and out of there they're in there in the morning and they leave at night. They're not a problem in terms of, of a lot of traffic. Um, that's, I think, all I have to say on that. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Gord Sweeney. Okay. Go ahead, Gord. Name and address, please. It's Gord Sweeney, uh, 310 Front Street, Kuwaitan. Um, I agree with all the uh, concerns people voiced about the uh, expansion of the docking by Two Bears and Mr. Chaya. I, I don't have much to add to that. I, I, I'm happy with what the town has uh, decided to do thus far. I wanted to make a further comment about DTL. I do not know the people who run DTL, but I also feel they actually made an improvement to the site, which is much more than I can say for anything that Mr. Chaya and Two Bears have done. They've cleaned up the site. They are not a heavy traffic uh, problem in the bay. I haven't seen DTL boats speeding. Um, I, I feel that DTL has been, um, an asset at that site as opposed to everything else that's gone on there. Okay. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I see nobody nobody else. Okay, um, we'll move to the committee and let's start with John McDougall. 
Thanks, Mr. Chair. I I think uh, I don't have any questions for for uh, anybody. Um, and as far as uh, comments or discussion, right? You want to carry on later with discussion? Yes, please. Okay, I have no questions. I've had my questions answered uh, in prior uh, in the prior application. Okay, thank you, thank you. John Barr. A uh, question for Kevin, please. Um, Kevin, if uh, if we recommended approval of the uh, seventy-two additional slips, how does that fit with the lack of parking? So the you know the key word uh, or key for it, part of that phrase is up to seventy-two slips. Uh, approving them does not relieve them from the re park, uh, from the zoning bylaws requirement of one parking space per docking slip. Uh, so they could uh, add additional parking docking slips basically until they run out of room for parking on site. So as I mentioned previously, I, I, I doubt that they'd be able to find 72 additional parking spaces on site. Uh, it's certainly their right to uh, look at uh, ways of reconfiguring the property to provide additional parking spaces to meet that requirement. And we're happy to work with them uh, uh, by the site plan that he submitted. There seems to be room for uh, parking for an additional 19 slips by what they've indicated on their on their sketch. Uh, it may be that once they get everything dimensioned out, uh, there may be more or less parking available once everything's compliant with our zoning bylaw regulations. Uh, so whatever parking they can suit, uh, it can fit on site there, uh, they would be free to add additional parking until or additional slips until they met that parking limit. Could they, could the proponent reapply for parking in another location? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, with, uh, the applicant's free to submit uh, an application and uh, any completed application will be given due consideration. Um, it's a you know, yeah, yeah it, it, we get into a lot of hypotheticals there. That's about as much as I can say about that. Okay, no further questions at this time. Thank you. Robert? I don't have any questions with regards to the application, Mr. Chair. It seems to be okay the way it's written. They're going to be bound by the one one to one spot. So the 72 is almost a moot point. But no questions, Mr. Chair, for Ray Pearson. the application. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, Ray Pearson. Yeah, just a, a question for Kevin. Is there a process that DTL can follow to get his site permitted um, as possibly an added use to that zone? Well, they should be talking with Canadian Pacific Railway because CP Rail via Two Bears Marina has uh, submitted applications to approve uh, the, the, this set of 72 docks. Uh, they have indicated no intention of uh, approving the docks associated with DTL contracting. Uh, so as landowner, that's their prerogative. And as, as landowner, if they don't seek those approvals, then uh, then we're, we have an enforcement issue with, uh, well, we, we, have, we, we will continue to have an enforcement issue with the unpermitted docks. Uh, so uh, Mr. They, he should be speaking with uh, CPR. Okay, and just a, a clarification on your recommendation. It does read complying with the marina and to include up to an additional 72 docks. So if I'm reading that right, that means it's up to that amount of, of docking spaces based on the number of parking he can get there on the existing site, right? Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. You're good, Ray? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Hey, Tannis. Um, yeah, Kevin, a question for you. On your recommendation, um, following condition A, that they obtain building permits for the new docks on the subject property. Can I get clarification that new um, uh, refers to the docks that were built without permits that are currently on site plus any new docks that they will build going forward? Yes, that, that is accurate. So I apologize for any uh, any confusion there. Uh, so. Uh, um, uh, 
So uh, you, uh, if you wanted to, you could uh, make a, a, a small amendment to that to say obtain building permits for the unpermitted docks. Uh, you know, perhaps that'd be a little bit clearer. So I apologize for that. Yep. Melissa, you've got that. Okay, Tannis, back to you. Uh, that was my only question. Thank you. Uh, Bev, we'll go to you. Oh, you, we can't hear you, Bev. Sorry. Um, yes, about these docks. I'm wondering if we should defer it and let them decide how many docks they can have um, that are legal and you know bring it up next month i would be more comfortable with that rather than leaving the 72 docks because other people can still use it can't they or they'll have to remove the the other docks that are not permitted kevin is that true um so you know, this approval will sort of guide us going forward into site plan control where we will you know we will require dimensioned and detailed drawings that we can uh, assess for, uh, you know, how and that they will, you know, will consider any proposal they make so, so to determine how many parking spaces and thus how many part, uh, how many of the uh, unpermitted docks can remain. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, am I missing uh, or missing part of your question? Uh, I don't know. I got lost there. Sorry. I'm just saying if there's there we're, we've got 72 docks there. If they're only allowed to have and I didn't do the math, but say they're allowed to have 40 docks. Are they going to take the other 32 away right away? And then the 40 is what we've consented to. Like, I don't want extra docks there because people will be or is there a time frame like they have to have it out by September or how does that work? Well, this is, you know, site plan control will, which we're working with them uh, on an ongoing basis, uh, will be the at this point the, the determining uh, it, uh, process for determining exactly what gets permitted there. Uh, so, you know, if say they found enough room for 25, you know, just using a random number, uh, additional docks there, then the expectation of the city of Kenora would be that all docks in excess of 25 would be removed from the property. So there's no time frame or anything they could probably use until the end of the summer, except they don't have any of the, any of the parking. Uh, all I can say is we've, we've requested voluntary compliance uh, with the City of Kenora's bylaw. You can see how well that's working to date. <laughs> okay. Um, the other, I guess the, uh, Ray asked the question about the DTL, um, and I guess they're, as you say, we'll have to uh, speak with CPR, yeah, the CPR. Um, and just the other, just a comment that uh, maybe we could look into getting, or who do we contact to go about getting signage on uh, for the lake, just for the, um, the fellow from DTL had suggested signage so people know how fast to go that would maybe be on the bridge, but I don't know, that's our responsibility or we could pass it along to somebody just to make life a little easier for everybody over there. Yeah, that, that gets beyond the, or that's, yeah, there's a, there's sort of a, a, a blended jurisdiction there and I'm not an expert on, uh, on, uh, uh, on, uh, on signage and, and speed limit enforcement uh, on the lake. So, uh, you know, we certainly, you know, we, the concerns are out there. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've heard the radio spots where they're, <laughs> you know, they're sing singling out uh, the Kuwaitan channel uh, as yeah. an area of OPP interest. And uh, I would suspect that if, uh, you know, those flight uh, uh, requests for compliance are unsuccessful, that there may be other alternatives looked at in terms of communicating with the, uh, the with watercraft operators. Okay, um, I, that's all my questions or comments. Thank you very much, Kevin. You're welcome. So Kevin, my question to you, I just, this might be a little bit repetitive. If, if the contractor goes to CPR, what is it that he's, going to CPR for? Well, he's going to, uh, he's going to rate, he'd be going for to CPR for them to submit a new permission application for further extension of the marina uses uh, on that property. Uh, uh, so we'd be back here again with uh, CPR submitting another application, which, uh, you know, certainly be disappointing that they, you know, I, I don't know why they wouldn't uh, have included DTL if they wanted DTL to be on the property. Uh, they had every, every right to and every opportunity to in submitting this application and uh, uh, for whatever reasons uh, uh, CPR and Two Bears Marina didn't uh, uh, didn't indicate a desire to keep detail on the property. 
Okay. So I did, and again now, so I just want to make sure I understand. Site plan control determines the amount of parking they have available. Once they determine what parking they have available, when they come through with a parking plan, then they're allowed to have the appropriate numbers of docks. Is that correct? Yes, so that's, uh, that would be compliant with the zoning bylaw. So under site plan control, that's the diagram where the size of the, the size of the stalls, that sort of thing. And then once you accept the site plan control, then they, then they need to, that's the number of docks they can have. Yes, and I and I under you know there uh, there have been uh, we have received uh, you know uh, heard concerns regarding the sketch that was submitted and how realistic that might be given the topography of the site. Uh, so you know I have communicated with the agent working for them on that application that we do expect to see details of grading and surfacing and uh, uh, you know and you know design drawings that uh, that show how you know go beyond a sketch to this is exactly what's going to be on the site with dimensions showing compliance with the zoning bylaw okay so so what we're actually what we're actually asking here tonight then is that okay wait maybe i'll do it a little differently is there any more questions go ahead john Yeah, I'm, I'm a little confused about, is the detail docks on permitted docks? Yes. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to sound flippant. Uh, we, we never received any applications for permits or site plan control. I, but I, the, but the, the, the detail docks are rented from Two Bears. Two Bears has a lease with CPR. Yes. It's, it doesn't make sense to me, maybe those to others, why DTL has to go to CPR. Well, it's CPR's property. And uh, so this is this is CPR's application for permission. Uh, uh, Two Bears Marina Incorporated is acting as agent, but this is CPR's application for permission to expand the use on the property. And all I can speak is to the information that they provided with their permission and what they requested. Uh, they've shown a sketch that doesn't include any docs for DTL unless, unless DTL is using some of these 72, uh, you know, and then they're free to rent the individual slips to whomever they want to rent them to. So uh, perhaps they, that's their intention. Uh, they haven't indicated. But the, um, but the, the, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure if I, if I lease a property from Wayne, that that property is any longer, and then I rent it to some like that property during the term of my lease is, is still wings. Yeah, that's a that's a legal matter between uh, I'd say between DTL but and uh, Two Bears and CPR. Uh, we deal with the use of the property, and uh, ultimately it's the responsibility of the property owner. However, they want to lease or apportion or rent out uh, sections of their property as long as it's compliant with the zoning bylaw. Uh, you'll often hear us say we uh, we zone uses, not people. Uh, so that and continue that extends to corporations. Uh, uh, we don't uh, police who's using those docks uh, as long as they're used in compliance with the zoning bylaw. Exactly. Then I still I'm still unsure why DTL has to go to CPR. Because yeah, uh, we, won't, we won't accept an application without it CPR uh, uh, signing off on it. It's their property. Nobody has a right to make application for property they don't own. The two bears made the application and they, they no. leased the property. Uh, they acted as so agent. It's actually oh, hold on, hold on, Tannis. Hold on. Is hold on. So hold on, Tannis. John, will you finish? Well, I, I'm basically finished. I, okay. Like I said, I just don't understand that particular I, line of reasoning, but anyhow. I, I'll, I'll, I'll give the floor to Tannis if she has something to add. I, I would just like to move the discussion on because I don't feel that this is relevant uh, point of questioning to this application. Okay. Point taken. So, discussion-wise, Robert? 
Uh, not much to discuss, Mr. Chair. This is just a application for uh, up to 72 spots if they can provide all the parking. Um, I don't see much to discuss and can certainly support this application, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Great. I'm with, uh, I'm with Robert on that. It's um, unclear with uh, the way it's going. Panis? All good here. Thank you. Bev? I'm good. Thank you. John McDougall? Good. Thanks, Mr. Chair. John Barr? Uh, nothing further. Resolution, Melissa? An application D132110 to seek permission for expansion of a legally non complying marina to include up to an additional 72 boat slips should be approved subject to the following conditions. A, that Two Bears Marina Inc. obtain building permits for the unpermitted docks on the subject property owned by the Canadian Pacific Railway. B, that Two Bears Marina Inc. remove all unpermitted docks from the subject property owned by the Canadian Pacific Railway and C, that approvals from the Ministry of Natural Resources are provided for an expansion to the land use permit, LUP, to include the marine expansion. I just want to clarify, did I hear site plan control? Site plan control was not included in that. So site plan control was not included? Not as either A, B, or C. Would you like um, an amendment? Well, again, Kevin, I thought you said site plan control was included. I said site plan control is required under the site plan control bylaw. This property is subject to site plan control. So uh, you could put it in as a condition. Uh, either way, it's we're going to require it. Um, I'm looking at the committee. Should we put it in as a requirement? Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Chair, we have not done that in the past, so we don't see a lot of site controls in a lot of our applications, especially for minor variants. Is that not accurate? Mm -hmm. And like the planner, the city planner had mentioned that it is, this is, it's mandated to, by bylaw to have a, a site plan control. So I think it's covered that way, Mr. Chair. Okay. John Barr, you had your sort of hand up there. No, you're good. Okay. All right. Um, if there's no further discussion, we need a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make motion that the Planning Advisory Committee rec or approve application D13 21 10 as read by the Secretary Treasurer, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Seconder. John Barr seconds it. All in favor. Okay. That is a carried vote, Mr. Chair. Okay. It's Mr. Dirksen, through you to the applicant being Two Mary's Bears Marina and the owner being Canadian Pacific Railway, you have received an approval here on your application for permission to expand a legally non compliant marina that is subject to a 20 day appeal period, which takes us to August 8th. I will circulate notice of the decision by Thursday, July 22nd. Thank you. Okay, um, we're going to take a couple minute break here and then we'll move on and it is uh, going on nine o'clock. So prior to the break, is everybody okay to go beyond nine o'clock? Yes, Mr. Chair, I will. Yeah. Okay. Deb? Yep. Yeah. Ray, everybody's okay? All right. Yeah. We'll take a two minute break. And, and Mr. Chair, sorry, it's Ryan here. Uh, just with, with your permission, would, if I could use a, a slide deck as a visual to support the presentation for Carlton Road, just because I'll get that set up during the break to save some time. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, I know Melissa, would I be able to share my screen just so I can get that set up to save some time? Do you have capability to do that? Sorry, Ryan, Adam has control right. there. I think he'll give you that. Yeah, no, I can certainly uh, give Ryan that, uh, that ability. Thanks, Adam.
Hi, sweetie. Two minutes. Come on. Okay, stuck. Tip tail Okay, can you remove that? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'm watching for the committee. I'm still short a few. So Ryan, can you clarify that we're showing the owner's name is Gary and Julie for Brant? Uh, no, that, that's not correct. It's, it's Rob Hawley and Bev Olson. Mr. Chair, the decisions that were circulated this afternoon for committee review do include the appropriate application names. On the staff report, sorry. No, on the decisions. On the decision, okay. Okay, everybody's back. Am I seeing the whole committee here? I'm back. John Bowen. No, oh, I'm still short. I need Robert. Let me know when you're oh Robert's back. Everybody's Mr. Back. Chair, thank you. Yes. Okay, we'll proceed. We'll move on to consideration of an application for consent, D-102105, Carlton Road, Holly Olson, and Ryan, you are the agent. 
correct? Thank you very much, Ms. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I just got a, a slide deck to help with some of the, the visuals with the presentation. So hopefully everyone can see it in front of them. Um, I don't, I'll just turn to you, Mr. Chair, make sure you, you can see that and I'll assume everyone else can as well. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, excellent, thank you. Um, so this is an application put forth by, um, on behalf of the property owners, Robin Hawley and, and Beverly Olson. Um, for the creation of three new lots um, by, by consent located at 841 Carlton Road. So the, the, the property um, in the official plan is designated as rural lands and is zoned as rural. Uh, the subject property is 57 hectares in size and located approximately 20 kilometers as the crow flies north of Kenora, about the, of City Hall. Uh, the lot is primarily forested area that is unused by the current owners. Uh, there's one existing residential dwelling on, on the subject property. There is a, a transmission line that runs across the property north-south, which has a easement for, for that, um, for the hydro. And access is off of Carlton Road. And currently the, the portion of the Carlton Road that crosses this property is owned by the applicant. It, it's not, um, not city lands where the road's currently, currently located. And the surrounding context, so the, um, it's primarily residential properties located on rural lots in the surrounding lands. Um, you can see that the property abuts Alcock Lake um, and it's right at the outflow of Alcock Lake where Alcock Lake flows into the Winnipeg River. And there are identified spawning habitat for Northern Pike and Walleye in, in that section of the, the outflow. Um, there, and, and I'll, I'll touch on this a little bit more, but the, the retained piece you can see is, is abuts Alcock Lake as well. And, and there's a, with the Carlton Road being turned over to the city, it will create a natural severance. So um, working with the uh, owner's lawyers, there will be a merger agreement prepared to merge the um, retained piece on, on the south east corner with the retained piece on the north just to make sure that there are no creation of new lots in keeping with um, the city official plan on for Alcock Lake. Um, the identified fish spawning area is, is located entirely within the retained lots. Um, and typically, I guess from our perspective for um, when, when we do fish habitat assessment work, uh, recommendations for fish spawning habitat will typically uh, involve a 30 meter buffer um, from the um, spawning habitat for protection from, from development. Um, there are no proposed activities or creation of new lots within that area. Um, and, and I think that's likely why MNRF has also not included any comments on the property. There is a, an extractive industrial site located to the west of the subject property in gray. Uh, we have had discussions with the owner of this property and, and it has not been functioning as um, an extractive site for quite some time and, and there are no plans um, for it to be a, used as an industrial site in, in the future. Uh, so the, the proposed severance is the creation of three new lots, all with access from Carlton Road. Uh, maintain the existing OP designation, official plan designation and zoning. And it's um, very compatible with surrounding properties which have similar zoning and OP designation. Uh, the lot boundaries um, were as much as possible used to incorporate existing features such as the hydro right away and the small uh, wetland area that's located between two of the lots. And as mentioned earlier to address um, the uh, official plan addressing some of the lake capacity issues on Alcock Lake. Uh, the, there will be a merger agreement that joins the retained southern parcel with the retained northern parcel. So there'll be no creation of, of new lots on Alcock Lake. And the property owners have agreed as, as part of, of this severance application to transfer ownership of Carlton Road to the city of Kenora to kind of address this um, issue of, of the municipal road not being on municipal land. So this, again, I just wanted to revisit the, the map here. Again, this is just where Alcock Lake flows out into the Winnipeg River. And for those familiar with the area, you got Silver Ghost Drive is, is just to the east on the other side of um, that, where the creek flows into the Winnipeg River um, on the other side of the road. 
Um, so policy framework, provincial policy statement supports residential development, including lot creation, as long as it is compatible with the surrounding context. And again, this is very similar use to the, the surrounding properties. Um, the official plan supports residential growth in the rural area where lot size and configuration can support private water supply and sewage systems. And I think I had uh, heard from Melissa that um, the Northwestern Health Unit was out at the property late last week. And I think they just, it was great that it had a quick turnaround that they've indicated that um, they're satisfied that these um, new lots can support um, private sewage systems. Um, and there's just a table showing that um, the area of the proposed lots are all more than double the size of what the requirements are um, for rural zoning. Uh, the frontage on Carlton Road all, also exceeds um, often more than double, one and a half times to almost three times the, the required amount. And it also got the depths of the properties to show there as well. So they're all generously sized and, and well above any um, zoning requirements for rural properties. So I guess in summary is, is just in terms of whether it's a provincial policy statement, official plan or zoning bylaws, this application meets those, those tests. Um, there is ample opportunity and frontage on, on the road for, from Carlton Road to access each of the three new lots. I think keeping with surrounding land uses, um, Northwestern Health Unit has uh, provided comments that they are, um, that there is uh, room for uh, sewage on, on each of the properties. And also um, there is waste collection along the Carlton Road by the city of Kenora um, for, for these new lots. So thank you very much. And just if there are any questions. Okay, thank you. Back to, back to you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Kevin, we'll move to you, please. Okay, uh, Mr. Haynes has been so thorough that I'll try to keep my report as succinct as possible and not covering too much of the same territory. So uh, uh, as Ryan indicated, there, this is a proposal for the creation of three new lots uh, of uh, 5.3 hectares, 8.1 hectares and 5.3 hectares from an existing 57 hectare property. Uh, Mr. Haynes has already described accurately the existing conditions of the property. Uh, I included a photo uh, 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 which uh, could quite easily be mistaken by for any of our three consent applications today, a uh, uh, rural road with lots of trees around it. Uh, in terms of consistency with, see, with the provincial policy statement, uh, uh, the we believe it to, I believe it to be generally consistent uh, with the PPS, which promotes uh, managing and directing land use to achieve efficient and resilient development in land use patterns. It does permit residential development, including lot creation that is locally appropriate, and uh, and uh, states that development that is compatible with the rural landscape and can be sustained by rural service levels should be promoted. Uh, so uh, the, under the official plan, the designation is rural area, as is the designation of uh, most of the adjacent properties. There's uh, an industrial development area about 140 meters west, which Mr. Haynes mentioned to uh, is the former uh, gravel extraction operation. Uh, residential development uh, is restricted to, uh, in rural areas to single detached dwellings on relatively large lots serviced by private water and sewage. And development proposals are to be limited in scale and not detract from the planned role and function of the settlement area and preserve the rural character and the scenic quality of the rural landscape, avoiding densities more appropriately found in the settlement area, uh, which I believe is accomplished here. In terms of the zoning uh, bylaw, most of the property is zoned RU rural zone, uh, except for the wetland area on the residual property, which is zoned EP and environmental protection area. And, I, and just as a comment aside, I didn't include this in the report, uh, this doesn't affect the uh, consent application, the EPA being on the residual property. Uh, it may come into play uh, in terms of proximity to development on the newly created uh, lots eventually, uh, but that would be a matter for once we know what and where is proposed to be located on the, uh, on the property and we can make a determination of, at that time as to whether any environmental impact statements may be required for proximity to those uh, wetlands, either zoned as EP or, or the wetlands that aren't zoned that uh, we know to be on the southern portion of the property. So development in the RU zone is subject to the regulations of section 4.12 of the zoning bylaw. 
and uh, single detached and seasonal dwellings are permitted in this zone and uh, and the proper and the proposed lots do meet the frontage and lot area requirements. In regard terms of results of a departmental and agency circulation uh, was circulated for comment on June 23rd. Uh, in terms of responses received, uh, Hydro One did indicate no concerns, but that all distribution lines are inside the road allowance. A transmission technician will need to be scheduled to provide comments and confirm easements as there is a transmission line running through the property. The request has been sent to the appropriate office slash department. Uh, they do mention road allowance and we do know that that road is on private land, but uh, that will be sorted out, I'm sure, with the, uh, the creation of a road allowance through this consent application. Uh, Kenora Engineering no, uh, located, uh, sorry, uh, indicated no concerns as long as the Carlton Road right of way is obtained by the city. And uh, our Rose Department uh, commented if approved entrance permits will be required for any new uh, entrances created. Uh, we did receive a late comment from Northwest Health Unit uh, uh, saying that they had no concerns. And Mr. Haynes already referenced that, uh, uh, that recent news. In terms of uh, uh, public comments, uh, this was uh, circulation of the notice of complete application and, and hearing uh, was uh, uh, was circulated in accordance with Section 53 of the Planning Act um, as of the date of the report. And since we have received no public comments in regards to this application, uh, my evaluation is that if approved, the proposed new lots will allow <laughs> three new residences to supply local housing. The application is supported by the policies of both the provincial policy statement and the official plan and is compliant with the regulations of the RU zone of the zoning bylaw. Uh, the legislative framework for consent approval is uh, included in the report for information. Uh, so I'll move forward to my recommendation, uh, which is that application D10-21-05 for consent for lot severance on property located at 841 Carlton Road and legally described as PIN 42136-0252, City of Kenora, be approved and provisional consent be granted subject to the following. One, the original executed transfer slash deed of land form, a duplicate original and one photocopy for city records be provided for each parcel. Two, a schedule, a schedule for the transfer slash deed of land form on which is set out the entire legal description of the pins in question and containing the names of the parties indicated on page one of the transfer slash deed of land form to be provided for each parcel. Three, that approved permits are received from the Northwestern Health Unit for private servicing. Four, that the, and, and we, I believe that we have received those now. Four, that the reference plan for survey indicates that the right of way for Carlton Road is to be transferred to the city of Kenora. Five, three original copies and one PDF copy of the reference plan of survey bearing the land registry office registration number and signatures as evidence of deposit therein and illustrating the parts to which the consent application relates, which must show in general the same area and dimensions as the sketch forming part of the application be provided. Six, that the payment of any outstanding taxes, including penalties and interest and any other local improvement charges, if applicable, shall be paid to the city of Kenora. Seven, that the application for an entrance permit for each lot is received and approved by the city of Kenora. Eight, that the prior to endorsement of the deeds, the secretary treasurer shall receive a letter from the owner or owner's agent slash solicitor confirming that conditions number one through number seven have been fulfilled. Clearance from the city of Kenora and external agencies as required are to be included. And nine, that all costs associated with surveys, legal fees and matters related to the application are the responsibility of the developer slash applicant. And uh, we note the sections 5341 and 5343 of the Planning Act apply. That I conclude my report. Thank you. Um, Ryan, we'll go back to you quickly. Anything you want to add? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. No, I've not, nothing further to add. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anybody in the public that would like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak against this application? I'm seeing none. So I'll move on to questions from PAC members. And Ray, I'm going to start with you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have uh, no comments or uh, questions at this time. Okay, thank you very much. Robert, I'll go to you. Uh, no questions with regards to this application, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Tanis, I'll go to you. No questions. Thank you. Bev, I'll go to you. Thank you. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, you can hear me? Okay, thank you. I just had one question <clears throat> regarding the road. Are they actually surveying, surveying a piece 
out of the parcel and that is what you're selling to the, the city or is it just an agreement of a right away? Kevin? Uh, no, the, 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 what is being proposed is to survey out uh, a road allowance matching the uh, location of the current road and transfer that to the city. Okay, and are they doing, they're doing this by ref plan, not by subdivision then, right? You did say ref plan. Yeah, I believe, yeah. Okay, just because, okay, that's fine. That's my question. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, John McDougall. No questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you. John Barr. Uh, nothing for me, thank you. And I have no questions. Um, okay, let's move on quickly to, or let's move on to discussion. Um, and again, let's just start, Bev, let's start with you. No, I'm fine, thank you. No discussion. Tannis? I'm good, thank you. Ray Pearson? Nothing here, Wayne. Hey, Robert? Uh, nothing to add or no discussion, Mr. Chair, thank you. John Barr? Uh, nothing for me, thanks. John McDougall? Nothing for me, uh, Mr. Chair, thank okay. you. And I'm fine. Um, can we call for a motion? Are we going to have have her read it? Um, I guess we can, but it, I can make the motion, Mr. Chair. I think oh, we all read it as PAC members, if you want. But if we, if you want, Mr. Chair, if it, if uh, Bev is requesting to read it, I, no, was just that, I get... thought that's. I just thought that's what we what the format was now. But Robert, you do a great job, so go ahead. Kevin, okay. Kevin just read all the conditions. Okay, we're good. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'll make motion that the Planning Advisory Committee approve the application for consent on application D102106, uh, as it was communicated to us by the Planner Secretary or uh, Secretary Treasurer earlier today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Seconder? I see John McDougall. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, that is a carried vote. Mr. Haynes, you have received provisional approval here this evening. It will be subject to a 20 day appeal period, which you are well aware of. That takes us to August 11th after I provide notice by Thursday, July 22nd. If you have any questions, feel free to get in contact. Otherwise, thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ryan. Um, okay, we move on to D10 2106 Villeneuve Road, and that's Hamlin. And Tara, we are you are the agent presenting tonight, so the floor is yours. All right, well, thank you. Uh, so this application again is to um, create one new rural lot, uh, two point two hectares in size. I think you've all seen the um, the draft uh, reference plan. Um, the property will be used for a single family dwelling, and the retained portion of the property uh, to the north is about is thirteen point nine hectares in size. Uh, the additional lands to the west, um, which will be um, separated once the um, road, as you see, has been uh, surveyed out, has been transferred to the city of Kenora. Again, this is the Villeneuve Road has been uh, located on private property for, you know, the millennia. <laughs> so uh, that will be done also by merger agreement. So the subject lands are residential use land zoned rural, and uh, there is a residence, a garage, and two small outbuildings on the property. The residence is serviced with a private well and a septic field. There's an area on the northwestern corner which is used as a personal storage area, and the garage located on the retained lands is used for a small scale uh, home industry as a mechanic shop. The retained lands include an easement in favor of Bell Canada or Hydro One Networks. And uh, the, so the, I don't know if you had a chance to go and look, but the vacant land is well treated. There are several um, uh, uh, quad trails that have been developed by the current owner over the years. Um, and um, it's actually quite a, a lovely piece of property. The new driveway was approved with an entrance permit earlier this year. There is an existing easement, parts two and three on plan 23R 8735. Um, and that's in favor of Bell Canada, which for, forms uh, the, pr the proposed boundary, north boundary for the new lot. Uh, we wanted to make sure that that easement uh, remained on the, re on the retained lot. 
The lands are also um, subject to a flooding easement. However, the lay of the land precludes uh, flooding on that part on the on the uh, either the uh, retained or the new lot, um, it, with the exception, of course, to that piece that is on on the west side of Villeneuve Road. Uh, three portions of Villeneuve Road are located on the subject lands and they've been surveyed out and will be transferred to the city of Kenora. And as I noted, uh, the part of the retained lands that are on the western side will be tied together um, with a merger agreement uh, once the Villeneuve Road is transferred to the city of Kenora. The lands to the south are part of the, uh, part of the Transcanda pipeline operations and the subject lands are approximately 400 meters from the actual pipeline itself, and therefore not in close proximity to the right of way. The subject property is approximately 190 meters from the area of the property that is zoned um, heavy industrial. Um, and the lands to the east contain a hydro right of way and an outdoor uh, storage facility and residence. The lands to the north are vacant and the Winnipeg River is located across the Illinois road to the west. With respect to the provincial policy st statement, the creation of one new rural lot will provide additional housing opportunities, particularly after the proposed new residence is constructed and the prospective new owners sell their uh, existing residence right within uh, sort of the more urban area of, of the city. The application is consistent with the policies as it is appropriate to uh, to the available infrastructure and is efficient development and an acceptable, acceptable land use uh, pattern in the area. Uh, the official plan, the subject property is designated as rural and um, that permits re uh, limited residential development uh, where the lot size and configuration can support uh, private services. Um, and with respect to the Northwestern Health Unit, that application has gone forward to them and the fees paid. However, they're having some internal um, problems with their um, database and they couldn't give us any news today. So that'll be something that will um, be part of the conditions of approval and one that we can meet rather quickly. Yeah. So with the exception of the occasional noise associated with the pressure release, which is audible throughout an extensive uh, portion of the city of Kenora, the proposed residential use on subject lands is not negatively affected, um, nor do they negatively affect the pipeline operation. The treat areas on the Transcanda lands and the Villeneuve Road and the treat areas uh, proposed to be maintained on the south side of the, of the uh, newly created lot will provide um, adequate buffering. So the planning coordinator for Transcanada Pipeline though has requested that a warning be um, placed on title um, or in this case the, the uh, proposed new owner is actually sitting in on the meeting and has a copy of this warning just with respect to the noise um, when the pressure is released. So um, I'm, I'm imagining that'll be a note to this approval. Access is from the Villain of Road and the entrance permit has been approved. Um, so um, just to summarize, uh, we're going to create one new lot. It's 2.2 hectares in size. Uh, the retained lot is 13.9, including the easement. And that's just the northern portion. The western portion, um, there's river there and, uh, and some little bits of land. So that'll be something that they'll have to finish up in the, in the final reference plan. And uh, so then the merger agreement will tie those two pieces once the uh, villain of road is transferred to the city of Kenora. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, for the report, please. Yes, uh, thank you. And uh, uh, I, once again, I find myself uh, I, uh, having uh, the, much of my report covered by the uh, agent. Uh, so thank you, Tara. I'll try to keep things brief. Uh, so uh, yes, we do have one new, uh, uh, an application here to create one new lot uh, that is 2.2 uh, hectares in size, leaving a residual of 13.9 hectares. Uh, the property uh, as noted is uh, largely tree covered with a residence on the property. And uh, there is an easement in favor of Bell Canada that, uh, that crosses the property and forms the proposed Northern boundary of the new lot. Uh, there's wetland area as indicated on the southwest uh, portion of the property uh, and uh, that area is subject to flooding easement but is outside of the scope of this uh, uh, new lot there outside of the boundaries of the new lot being created 
Uh, neighboring properties do contain a variety of uses in this area with uh, adjacent properties um, mostly being large rural lots, uh, but it is proximity to uh, Trans-Canada pipelines, the, the Highway 17A bypass, and areas of commercial and rural residential development uh, to the east and west. In regards to the provincial policy statement, it's generally consistent with the policies of the provincial policy statement, which promote managing and directing land use to achieve efficient, resilient de development and land use patterns. PPS permits residential development, including lot creation that is locally appropriate and states that development that is compatible with the rural landscape and can be sustained by rural service levels should be promoted. In terms of the official plan, it's designated rural areas, uh, as are most of the uh, our adjacent properties to the east and west. Adjacent property to the south is designated as an industrial development area. The adjacent property to the north and properties along Greenwood Drive to the east are des designated as community development area. Uh, residential development in the rural area is restricted to single detached dwellings and relatively large lots serviced by private sewer and water. Uh, development proposals are to be limited in scale and not detract from the planned role and function of the settlement area and preserve the rural character and the scenic quality of the rural landscape, uh, avoiding, de avoiding densities more appropriate to the settlement center. In terms of the zoning bylaw, most of the property is zoned RU rural zone, except for the wetland areas in the southwest corner of the property that is zoned EP environmental protection. Uh, as noted with the previous application, uh, uh, where the EP is off of this, the property being created, uh, it can potentially uh, be an issue at a future stage if development is uh, proposed in close proximity. In this case, I, I saw where the driveway was being put in, which is at the eastern end of the portion uh, of the property. So it's unlikely that that uh, EP area is to be a, will be a factor in future development of the property. Uh, it is uh, proposed, it will meet the uh, requirements for site frontage and minimum lot area. In terms of interdepartmental agency circulation, uh, we did receive a few comments and one late one. So the ones we did receive uh, on time, uh, uh, engineering noted that they had no concerns as long as the city obtained the right of way for Villeneuve Road. And the roads department uh, noted that they had already approved a permit for the entrance uh, back in May. And we did receive uh, the late comment from TC Energy uh, uh, requesting that the new lot contain a warning clause, uh, the, as Tara already uh, refer, uh, referred to, uh, advising the future landowner, and I quote, TCPL operates an industrial compressor station within 750 meters of the subject lands. While noise emissions from the station are required to meet the MOECC requirements, sound may be audible at times. And uh, Melissa, I expect, has probably amended the motion already, uh, knowing how diligent she is to include that, uh, that additional comment. So uh, in terms of public comments, so we did circulate the notice in accordance with Section 53 of the Planning Act, and we did receive no public comments prior to or since uh, the drafting of the report. My val in terms of my evaluation, uh, if approved, the proposed new lot will allow for development of a new residence to supply local housing. The application is supported by the policies of both the Provincial Policy Statement 2020 and the official plan, and it is compliant with the regulations of the RU zone and the zoning bylaw. Uh, the legislative framework for consent approval is provided for information purposes, uh, so that moves me on to my recommendation which is that application D10-21-06 for consent for lot severance on property located at 181 Villeneuve Road and legally described as PIN 42174-0211, the City of Kenora be approved and provisional consent be granted subject to the following. One, the original executed transfer slash deed of land form, a duplicate original and one photocopy for city records be provided for each parcel. Two, a schedule for the transfer slash deed of land form on which is set out the entire legal description of the pins in question and containing the names of the parties indicated on page one of the transfer slash deed of land form to be provided for each parcel. Three, that an approved permit is approved, received from the Northwestern Health Unit for private servicing. Four, that the reference plan of survey indicate that the plant right of way for Villeneuve Road is to be transferred to the city of Kenora. Five, three original copies and one PDF copy of the reference plan of survey bearing the land registry office registration number and signatures as evidence of deposit therein and illustrating the parts to which the consent approval relates, which must show in general the same area and dimensions as the sketch forming part of the application be provided. Six, that the payment of any outstanding taxes, including penalties and interest and any local improvement charges if applicable shall be paid to the city of Kenora. Uh, and I imagine seven would be inserted with the TCP uh, 
uh, the Trans Canada Energy uh, uh, requirement. Uh, and then, uh, which would make eight that prior for endorsement of the deeds, the secretary treasurer shall receive a letter from the owner or owner's agent slash solicitor confirming the conditions, what will be now one through seven have been fulfilled. Clearance from the city of Kenora and external agencies as required are to be included. Nine, that all costs associated with surveys, legal fees and matters related to the application are the responsibility of the developer slash applicant. And just to note that 5341 and 5343 of the planning act apply. With that, I conclude my report. Thank you very much. Barb, back to you. Yeah, um, I think just one more a condition probably with respect to the merger agreement. Yes. Yeah, so that would be as eight and then, yeah, everything would adjust. Is that in there, Melissa? That no, in. that won't be an amendment. So without the, like a, a ref plan, we don't, have a way to describe it? How would the committee like it described? That a merger agreement? Can I suggest? Um, yeah, please uh, yeah, the the westerly portion, um, on the on the westerly um, portion of the line of road that forms part of the subject land be tied to uh, the retained portion, whatever part number that's going to be. Yeah. Okay, that a merger agreement be provided on the retained portion of, or the westerly portion of Villanova Road? Uh, uh, the portion of the retained lands west of Villanova Road. All good. And I'm just confirming that condition seven was circulated to the committee with the uh, TCPL uh, note. Thank you. All right, anything else? No, that's it, thank you. That's good. Um, is there anybody in the public that would like to speak in favor of this application? I see none. Is there anybody that would like to speak against the application? And I see none, I'll move to the committee and I'll start with Tannis. Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't have any questions or discussion. Okay. Bev Richards. No questions or concerns. Thank you. Ray Pearson. No questions. Okay. Uh, Robert. Yeah, just uh, maybe a small housekeeping question, uh, Mr. Chair, through you to uh, Kevin. Kevin, when I look at the staff report now, either I printed it wrong or I lost it wrong. But your recommendation item number 10, Kevin, if you can maybe take a look at it on the staff report is referring to application D10-2106. Can, can you maybe just clarify that for me in your staff report? Because I got a little bit heavily lost in the uh, recommendations and the uh, subject to the following. Now that could be me because I'm reading it wrong. I have difficulties getting on the share drive. So I part, uh, print in advance. Kevin? No, I think that reads right. Yeah, so this is D10-2106. Okay, oh, sorry, okay. But did did the recommendations match what you just said? Because I don't think so. Uh, other than well, the we, we did have to make the sort of the amendment right. on the fly for TCPs uh, Comment they, they submitted uh, today, so I, okay. I was ad I was I was ad hocing it a bit uh, there. Okay, all right, maybe that's right. Ad living, I mean, sorry. <laughs> so, so Robert, the the additional two, he read in the two additional or one additional, and then we added another one. Okay. Okay, so so, so then the prior to the endorsement, does that have to move down and the others move up? Is or. Uh, so basically, um, seven. Yeah, what it, what was seven in the written report would become nine, and the other two would be, would be inserted as seven and eight, and then the the new nine would re, would reference conditions one through eight have been fulfilled. Okay, thanks. Then sorry for the confusion on my end. Thanks. No, no I, I, I didn't make it easy when I'm throwing things at the end of the last minute here. Okay, thanks, guys. Sorry. John Barr. Uh, no questions. No comment. John McDougall. Nothing for me, Mr. Chair. Thank you. 
Okay, see no other questions. We'll quickly move around. I have no questions. We'll move around with discussion. Bev? No discussion, thank you. John McDougall? No discussion, Mr. Chair. Hear something? Think you buggered up again, right? Well, nothing to add, sorry. Okay. Tannis? Nothing to add. Robert? Nothing to add, Mr. Chair, thank you. John Barr? Nothing for me, thank you. Okay, we'll need a motion. Somebody? Okay, Ray, go ahead. Sure, I'll make motion that the application for D10-21-06 for consent for lot severance and property located at 181 Billinard Road and legally described as PIN 42174-0211 City of Kenora be approved and provisional consent be granted subject to the detailed conditions as laid out in the planner's report. Thank you. Seconder. Robert will second it. No further discussion. All in favor. Okay, that's carried. Thank you. Yep, that is a carried vote. So um, to you, Ms. Rickerby, and as per the application you made on behalf of David and Carolyn Hamlin, you have received provisional approval here this evening. Uh, it will be subject to a 20 day appeal period from the day of notice, which will be July 22nd. And that will take us to August 11th. You will receive notice via email by Thursday this week. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks, Star. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to D10-2107, Anderson Branch Road, and that's Burton. And I believe the applicant, Connor Burton, is going to present it. Connor, can I see you? I um, Connor is actually unavailable. He's out of town this week, so I am going to be presenting. Um, I also own the property we co-own. Okay. Nicole? Carly Wells is my name. Sorry. I didn't get the name. Carly Wells is my name. Carly okay. Wells? Yeah, thank you. Proceed. Okay. So our application for consent is for a rural zone property that is currently 2.9 hectares, um, which is 14.8 acres. And we are proposing to sever a plot of land that will be approximately 2.3 hectares. So that's 5.8 acres to create a plot of subject land for the hopeful purpose of residential development. Um, the subject land would provide approximately 121 meters, so 400 feet of lot frontage on Anderson Road with a depth at its deepest of approximately 195 meters, so 639 feet. Um, this proposed subject land would back up onto Crown land and the subject land has never been developed. It is a wooded area with no existing or former structures that we are aware of. Um, future owners would benefit from the accessibility of city services, including but not limited to maintain roads, garbage and recycle pickup and hydro access. I have a photo if I could share my screen. I don't know if that's necessary or not. But. Uh, yes, I'll uh, enable that. Okay. So just let me know if you guys can see it. We cannot. Okay. There. Okay, we can see it. Okay. So the proposed lot is just a heavily wooded area and then we would um, retain our home and there's also a barn, a garage and a septic field on the retained lot. Okay. That's it? And that's it, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Okay, Kevin, we'll move to you. Yes. Yeah, yeah so uh, we have an application here for uh, consent to create a single new lot in uh, the rural area. 
Uh, the effect of the approval would be to sever an existing six hectare property to create one new 2.3 hectare lot with a retained property of 3.7 hectares. Uh, the new lot will have frontage on Anderson Road and the intended use of the new lot is for residential development. The pro in terms of existing conditions, the proposed new lot is tree covered, the residual property is mostly cleared and contains a residence barn and garage serviced with a private septic field. Neighboring properties appear to be developed with residential and small scale agricultural uses on lots ranging in size from a hec less than a hectare to 40 hectares and larger. And you see there a photo I took uh, from the southeast uh, corner of the property from Anderson uh, Road uh, uh, showing the property. Uh, in terms of consistency with uh, policy and city directives, uh, provincial policy statement, uh, uh, the, the application is generally consistent with the policies which promote managing and directing land use to achieve efficient and resilient development and land use patterns. PPS permits residential development, including lot creation that is locally appropriate and states that development that is compatible with the rural landscape and can be sustained by rural service levels should be promoted. In terms of the official plan, the land use designation is rural area. Adjacent properties are also designated as rural area, and a, uh, except for an, ex uh, an area approximately 140 meters north of the subject property that is designated as industrial development area, uh, likely the location of a uh, current or former extraction operation. Residential development in the rural area is restricted to single detached dwellings and relatively large lots serviced by private sewer and water. Development proposals are to be limited in scale and not detract from the planned role and function of the settlement area and preserve rural character and the scenic quality of the rural landscape, avoiding densities more appropriate of the settlement area. In terms of zoning, the subject property is zoned RU rural zone. Uh, development RU is the zone is subject to the regulations of section 412 of the zoning bylaw. Single detached and seasonal dwellings are permitted in this in the zone. Lot frontages have to be 90 meters and minimum lot area is two hectares, both of which are met here. Adjacent properties to the northwest and south are also zoned RU. Properties to the east and southwest are zoned RR, rural residential. A wetland area located approximately 130 meters east of the property is zoned EP, environmental protection zone. Uh, the proposed consent was circulated for comment on June 23rd. No comments were received from anyone except for Kenora Roads, which com commented that if approved, an entrance permit will be required for the new entrance. In terms of public comments, this was uh, circulated in accordance with Section 53 of the Planning Act uh, as of the date of the report and since no public comments have been received. My evaluation is that if approved, the proposed new lot will allow for residential development of a new residence to supply local housing. The application is supported by the policies of both the provincial policy statement and the official plan is compliant with the regulations of the RU zone of the zoning bylaw. Uh, legislative framework for consent approval is submitted for information. So I move on to recommendation being that application D10-21- and actually there it should have said uh, 07, uh, I apologize, there's a typo there, for consent for, light sever for lot severance on property located at, oh, sorry, that, that, then that should have somehow the wrong section got uh, in there. So it should be at 1221 Anderson Road and legally described as 42174-0211. And that should actually, that should be 42136-0489 uh, my apologies, City of Kenora be approved and provisional consent be granted subject to the following. One, that the original executed transfer slash deed of land form, a duplicate original and one photocopy for city records be provided for each parcel. Two, a schedule of, of the transfer slash deed of land form in which is set out the entire legal description of the pins in question and containing the names of the parties indicated on page one of the transfer slash deed of land form to be provided for each parcel. Three, that an approved permit is received from Northwestern Health Unit for private servicing. Four, that three original copies and one PDF copy of the reference plan of survey bearing the land registry office registration number and signatures as evidence of deposit therein and illustrating the parts to which the consent approval relates, which must show in general the same area and dimensions as the sketch form and part of the application be provided. Five, that the payment of any outstanding taxes, including penalties and interest and any local improvement charges if applicable shall be paid to the city of Kenora. Six, that an application for entrance permit for each per lot is received and approved by the city of Kenora. Seven, that prior to endorsement of the deeds, the secretary treasurer shall receive a letter from the owner or owner's agent slash solicitor confirming that conditions one through six have been fulfilled. Clearance from the city of Kenora and external agencies as required are to be included. 
And finally, that all costs associated with surveys, legal fees, and matters related to the application are the responsibility of the developer slash applicant. And uh, just to note that 5341 and 5343 of the Planning Act apply. And uh, as we see here, when I when you have very three three very similar applications, uh, 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 I just missed uh, updating the recommendation in this one. So my apologies for those errors. So uh, Kevin, just a quick that an application for an entrance permit for each lot, do they require an entrance permit? For the, for the new lot, well, yeah, each new lot, which is one in this case. For each lot is received. So not, not both lots, just a lot, right? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, Charlie, we'll come back to you. Is there anything you wanna add? Um, no, I don't believe so. Everything is fine. Okay, thanks. Um, anybody from the public that would like to speak in favor of the application? I see none. Anybody that would like to speak against the application? I see none. So questions from PAC members, and we'll start with, um, let's start with John McDougall. Nothing for me, Mr. Chair. Okay. John Barr? Sorry, nothing for me. Thank you. Yeah, Richards. No questions or concerns. Thank you. Tannis. No questions or concerns. Ray Pearson. No questions or comments. Robert. Uh, no questions with regard to the application, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I also have no questions. So move quickly to discussion and I'll just circle the wagon, Bev. No, no questions. Thank you. John McDougall. Discussion. Nothing for me, Mr. Chair. Okay, Ray Pearson. Nothing to add, no. Okay, Tannis. No further questions. Robert. Uh, no, uh, not much, Mr. Chair, just that the uh, uh, city planner will just need to amend his recommendation to reflect what's actually in the notice of decision. It's just a very simple cut and paste error. Okay. And John Barr. Uh, nothing for me, thank you. Okay. Um, so we'll need a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make motion that the Planning Advisory Committee, uh, that application D102107 for consent for lot severance on property located at 181 Vivian uh, Road and legally described, described as pin 42136. That's, that's, oh, that's 1221 Anderson Road. Yeah, did it again. Okay, right. so the notice of decision is not accurate as well sorry thanks Ray. uh so uh, uh correction mr chair that the planning advisory committee that application d10 2107 for consent for lot severance on property located at 1221 anderson road kenora ontario uh described as pin 42136-0489 city of kenora be approved and provisional consent be granted subject to the conditions as outlined within the amended planning report, Mr. Chair. And another quick point that the uh, notice of decision needs to be corrected as well. Good. Okay, do we need to, we have a seconder? Ray Pearson, any further discussion? All in favor? That is a carried vote. The notice of decision, you are correct, um, Mr. Katowski did have the incorrect address, the PIN number and the file number were correct. So Carly, you have received provisional approval here this evening. You will receive notice of the, this decision by Thursday, July 22nd. That will be subject to a 20 day appeal period, which will take us to August 11th, 2021. Thereafter, you'll have one year to complete or fulfill the conditions of the application. And so you and I can certainly connect and talk about that um, at a later date. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, we will move on to recommendation to council, an amendment to the zoning bylaw D14, or zoning bylaw, application D14-2106. And I believe the name is two, and who's, I'm not sure who the, is there the applicant or the agent? Beth Green is the uh, agent here. So, sorry, who is? Beth Green, I see her, Beth G. Okay. I suspect it's her. Hi, Beth, you're there? 
Hello, yes, I am. Okay, do you want to proceed with the application, please? Hi there. Hi. My name is Beth, and I am here on behalf of the applicants, Tracy and Glenn Gary. So 865 East Mellick Road is located just a few minutes from Highway 17A. Uh, the property is approximately 50 hectares and is currently designated rural. So our application today is to change the zoning of a portion of the subject property from rural to highway commercial. Uh, this will allow uh, the applicant to develop an indoor and outdoor storage facility. So we're specifically talking about 4.25 hectares, which is really only about 8% of their property. So the portion of the property that is being rezoned is primarily tree covered with a gradual slope upward to the east. There is an existing entrance of East Mellick Road as well there. Uh, so there is one hectare area that is being designated as the primary location where they will be putting the indoor outdoor storage. And that area is already 25% cleared from trees and debris. Uh, the designated area will be over 250 meters from any existing residential dwellings at this time. Although not many commercial properties are along East Mellick Road, there are a few, uh, specifically a large industrial business that's further down, down the road. Uh, the lots that do contain residential dwellings are separated by large distances and dense trees. Um, and there are already many large steel, steel buildings down East Mellick, therefore the proposed built form will be consistent with, uh, with what's existing there now. Uh, so I'd like to point out that the uh, provincial policy statement does say that uh, they promote development in rural areas uh, that is compatible with, as long as it's compatible with the rural landscape and um, can be sustained by the rural service levels. So we believe we meet both of those. Uh, the City of Kenora official plan does allow for small scale commercial and industrial uses that meet the needs of the rural economy and may be permitted by an amendment to the zoning bylaw. So that's what we're working on here today. Uh, Kenora region is expanding and a small business of this nature will be utilized by many residents, both permanent and uh, our and our seasonal residents as well. So lastly, I would just like to point out that um, we will be working closely with the planner to for the redevelopment of this portion to ensure that it complies with all applicable zoning regulations and to ensure that it does meet the needs of the site plan control process as well. And that's everything for me today. Thank you. Um, Kevin. Yes, uh, so um, uh, as Beth has uh, mentioned already, so we, we have an application here to receive, uh, to uh, change, sorry, the zoning of the of a portion of the subject property from RU rural zone to HC highway commercial zone to allow for development of an indoor and outdoor storage facility. Uh, the property owner is proposing to develop that facility on uh, 4.25 hectare portion of the property. Uh, the land will be cleared and uh, for the outdoor storage and have up to five mini self storage buildings uh, located on the property. And there is a sketch site plan that has been uh, submitted by the applicant uh, uh, indicating the location in that area being rezoned where they're proposing to uh, locate uh, that uh, development. In terms of existing condition, uh, the portion of the property being rezoned is primarily tree covered with a gradual slope upward to the east. There is an existing entrance off, east of, off of East Mellick Road, which provides access to an existing residential dwelling that is located north of the area being rezoned. Uh, surrounding properties contain a mixture of agricultural land uses on large lots and rural residential development on smaller lots of various sizes. East Mellick Road is one of the main arterial north-south roads providing access from the Highway 17A bypass to properties on the east side of Black Sturgeon Lake. Uh, there's a photo there uh, from a site visit uh, conducted on the 13th showing uh, uh, the property from the northwest corner at the, uh, the existing entrance that I referenced. 
Uh, in terms of consistency with legislated policy and city directives, uh, the provincial policy statement, uh, the proposed rezoning is consistent with those policies that promote development in rural areas that is compatible with the rural landscape and can be sustained by rural service levels and are appropriate to the infrastructure which is planned or available. In terms of the city of Kenora official plan, the land use designation of the property is rural area. Policy 4.8 of the plan states that rural areas include a variety of agricultural, residential, industrial, commercial, recreational, tourism, and open space uses, and that these areas may experience limited change over the lifetime of the plan. Small scale commercial and industrial uses that meet the needs of the rural economy may be permitted by an amendment to the zoning bylaw, provided that those uses are compatible with existing uses. Surrounding properties are likewise designated as rural areas. A large area on the west side of East Malik Road has been identified as having a high potential for aggregate extraction, and this extends to a small portion of the subject property located along the road, beginning approximately 75 meters north of the area being rezoned. In terms of the zoning bylaw, the property is currently zoned RU Rural Zone. This zone allows for the production of farm produce, as well as recreational and other compatible uses, as well as limited development of low density, single detached, seasonal, or permanent housing compatible with uses in a rural setting. An outdoor storage facility is not a permitted use in the RU zone. A wetland area in the east, eastern portion of the subject property located 130 meters approximately east of the area of the proposed development is zoned EP, Environmental Protection Zone. The proposed HC Highway Commercial Zone allows for the development of a wide range of uses and services that meet the needs of, re needs of residents, businesses, and tourists. The redevelopment of this portion of the property will need to comply with all applicable zoning regulations and will be subject to site plan control. In terms of uh, interdepartmental and agency circulation, it was circulated for comment on May, June 28th. In terms of responses received, uh, Hydro One indicated uh, no concerns, but that all distribution lines are protected by unregistered easement P858 or 85847. Primary underground at the property run and it runs along the road allowance. Uh, Kenora Roads uh, indicated no concerns, but that an entrance permit will be required if it hasn't already been applied for. And no other concerns were identified. In terms of public comments, uh, the public meeting is scheduled to be held on uh, uh, by council on July 20th. And notice of the application Sorry, that should have been the Planning Advisory Committee on uh, July 20th. Notice of the application was given in uh, accordance with Section 34 of the Planning Box, where it was by it was circulated on June 28th to property owners within 120 meters, and published in the Municipal Memo on July 8th and 15th, and circulated to persons and public bodies as legislated. The notice also stated that the Planning Advisory Committee would have the opportunity to consider recommendations for the application to the Council at their meeting of July. Sorry got those two mixed up. So councils on August 10th, planning advisory committees on July 20th, which is where we are here tonight. Uh, the minutes and relevant resolution from this meeting will be forwarded to council for their information. As of the date of this report, the planning department uh, has received an inquiry uh, with concerns and seeking additional information. And there were was additional follow up to that since writing the uh, since uh, uh, since the report was written, uh, but no formal co public comments had been received uh, at the date of the report. Evaluation, uh, this large rural property has a significant undeveloped area that appears to be suitable for redevelopment for the intended use. The limited area being rezoned will serve to confine the extent of the proposed uh, use and any future commercial operations to this portion of the larger property. The policies of the official plan are supportive of rezoning for small commercial developments that meet the needs of the rural community, provided that it is compatible with existing land uses. While the HC zone is generally associated with highways due to the name of the zone, the zone and associated uses may be suitable to any significant arterial roadway such as East Mellick Road. Properties zoned HC are not restricted to designated highways in the city of Kenora may be found, and may be found in a mixture of roads such as Anderson Road, Gold Road, uh, or Gold, Gould Road, Valley Drive, and Railway Street. This is also the only commercial zone that supports the proposed storage uses. Uh, therefore, it's my recommendation as a planner for the City of Kenora that the application for zoning bylaw amendment file number D14-21-06 to change the zoning of a portion of the subject property from RU Rural Zone to HC Highway Commercial Zone should be approved in lieu of public comments that may yet be received. Thank you. Beth, we'll come back to you. Is there anything you want to add at this time? 
Uh, no, I'm all right. Thank you. Okay. Um, I will go to the public. And is there anybody in the public that would like to speak in favor of this application? No? So there's nobody speaking in favor. If there are anybody that would like to speak against this application. And I see Gloria and you need to turn yourself on. You got, okay. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Uh, Kevin, you had mentioned that you hadn't received any notices from- Hold on a sec, Gloria. We need your name and your address first. Sorry. Gloria Maya. I live on uh, 214B Wider Drive um, off of Coker Road, which I travel on East Malik Road to get home. But I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Tim DePorto. He did receive a notice because his property is closer to the proposed amended uh, property. Um, but Kevin, you mentioned there was no public uh, comments received. Tim had received an email from uh, Melissa uh, with a copy of a letter uh, that was sent to the city uh, opposing the proposal. And Timothy had sent also an email on just last Friday before the due date uh, for comments. Uh, he did send an email opposing uh, the proposal as well. Yeah, yeah sorry, we yeah, hadn't, hadn't received one at the date of the writing of the application. And yeah, so sorry about that. Yes, and uh, Melissa, those were uh, added when they came into the agenda package, I believe. Okay, so does the committee have the copies of the both the all of the opposals that you did receive? So once again, I mean, the committee has letters, but we don't know who they're from. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we remove identifying information. So just uh, sorry, I'll I'll bring. No, up. sorry. If I could interject, there there were two notices, public comments circulated to the committee. One as of July fourteenth, twenty twenty one and as of July 16th, 2021. So the one that was circulated on July 16th, 2021 did have four pages to it. And I believe there were three commenting parties. But the, the personal information has been redacted. So as Mr. Chair has said, they are not aware of whom has made comment, but I can confirm that there were three comments circulated. To the okay, so does the committee then have the comments that you would have received on the 19th of Ju July, last Friday? Um, I do not have anything from, oh, that the 19th last Friday, was that not the 16th? Or, sorry. Yeah. yeah yesterday yeah, was the, the, the 16th. 16th. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so last okay. Friday would have been July 16th and comments were circulated after 1.30 PM. Okay. All right. So basically what the, 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 to oppose the proposal, one, the East Mellick Road is uh, substandard. It's not, uh, um, we, the, uh, I, I could, well, it's not good. I'm, in plain language, it's, it's not good um, to have the increased uh, storage trailers, uh, bigger, bigger uh, vehicles, the increased traffic. There's no sidewalks. People walk. We have dogs. There's no shoulders. Um, with the increased traffic for the um, for the storage units, uh, the safety concerns, um, the neighboring pieces of property. Uh, across the road from the storage unit is farmland. Um, the extra noise from the traffic, the banging of the doors or the, the extra people in the uh, close proximity of the farmland, uh, very disruptive. Um, I can't remember what else. It was in the email. He was here, but then he left because the, he couldn't stay. Um, but it's just that 
he was this person was opposed to the proposal um, that's yes, all i have to say for now sorry I'm pretty, thank you. Sure we, I'm pretty sure we received his emails okay thank you Ms. mr chair through to you to miss maya if if i could receive your email right now i will certainly circulate those comments that were sent as of july 16th sorry what if i could just receive your email i will circulate those comments to you right now oh it was not mine it was the you know, the other um the other commenting person okay yes. yeah i will recirculate those just so that um, they are able to confirm they've been included okay thank you Thank you. Um, is there anybody else that wants to speak against this application? I see no one else. All right, um, I'd like to move on to questions from the committee. And I'd like to start with, well, Ray, let's start with you. Uh, yeah, I got. To, I have one question, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess through you to Beth. Uh, just, I'm just looking at one of your site plans there, and I'm, I'm just curious. You, you've got uh, the site identified with Phase One and Phase Two. I was just curious how many, how many storage units you're planning uh, in total and for the future when, once all the development, all the phases are put together. Absolutely. So um, the intention is to start off with one building and to you majority of it, rest of it will be um, surface parking. Uh, and then the goal would be to not get any more than five units. It's a small family owned business. Uh, they don't intend to get much larger than five uh, storage units, five storage uh, buildings. What are, the, what are the size of the buildings? Uh, so they're between, for width, uh, they can be either 30 feet or 40 feet. Uh, and then length, they will uh, vary in length between 80 feet and uh, 120 feet. Um, that being said, the heights are all going to be one story. Therefore, majority of the land or majority of the buildings that will be on site will not even be um, visible from East Mellick Road. They will be tucked in the back. Um, the applicants actually own the entire 50 acres. And so the, the, the 4.25 acres will be tucked right in amongst their existing land. Okay, so these are quite large buildings then. I mean, yeah. Um, long by 30 to 40 wide, you said, or is the intent to divide them up inside or, or have them uh, one great big space inside? They're in the individual units. So we have been speaking with um, Olympia, which I'm not sure if you have seen some of the storage buildings um, on the East Mellick Road. Uh, those smaller one-story buildings that have individual units with individual uh, doors. So the first building that we had um, looked into was 30 by 80 feet, and that's a total of 14 units. So you can get 14 units in that one building, and that will be their intention. Um, and then the goal is to grow slowly and to simply grow if the need is there. Okay, okay. And you mentioned outdoor storage. So that's for like trailers and RVs and stuff like that. And for RVs, um, some of our the seasonal uh, okay. individuals may need a place to store their stuff in the winter. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anis? Oh, I'm already unmuted. Um, Kevin, for you, could you explain, um, so if this approval goes ahead, in terms of some of the questions that were in the public comments about environmental health and safety, um, um, drainage, that type of thing, could you explain the process going forward and how that would be controlled and those questions answered going forward if this application was approved? Well, this property is subject to site plan control as a commercial development, so we will be able to uh, scrutinize the details of it. Uh, 
uh, drainage is generally from east to west towards the, uh, the municipal road and uh, into the drainage ditches along the side, I would expect for what's cleared. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, sorry, am I missing something? Uh, I'm just trying to recall your whole question. Well, I just, I, um, for ourselves, but a lot for the public as well, their knowledge about um, if we go ahead and approve this, that doesn't mean they can go and do whatever. They still have to go through permitting and like the site application. Um, this isn't a carte blanche, do what you want to do. You've got a new zone to play with. No, and uh, and actually, you know, many of the same, most of the same regulations that are in place under the current rural zone. Uh, there's, you know, certainly activities under either zone that, uh, you know, it, you know, if, if someone is irresponsible, could result in in, in negative impacts. Uh, but we work with all applicants, regardless of the zone, to make sure that they're compliant with all applicable regulations. And uh, and you know, generally storage. Uh, is not a, a use which is intended with is which is associated with uh, nuisance factors that you associate with uh, some more intensive commercial or industrial activities. It's it tends to be pretty uh, um, uh, pretty passive. Thank you. Okay, Thomas. Yep. Thanks. Okay, let's go to Bev. Um, the only other thing was the, the, in the size, I saw two different <clears throat> heights. One was eight to 20 feet and one was 12 feet. I'm just wondering if she could give us the answer to the height of the buildings themselves. Hi, hi there. Um, so the original one that I have been quoted out is 10 feet. I believe when I did the application, I, I left a little bit of, um, I said eight to 20, just to yeah. provide a bit yeah. of um, range. Uh, but on average, these buildings, these individual units are really on, on average 10 feet. Would okay, and I think you've answered my common. question as to what's gonna be stored there. So that's everything I have. Thank you very much. Yeah, dry storage, thank you. Okay, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask a question here. Uh, actually, two questions, and uh, ahead of everybody else here. I, Kevin, to you, how do you determine the 4.25 acres? Is that going to be surveyed out? Uh, no, it'll be drawn out on our zoning map. Uh, you know, if in a in designated portion of the property, uh, the the applicant has provided a sketch, so our our zoning map would be amended to uh, uh, to uh, reflect the the sketch submitted. Uh, so. You know, it, 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 it's not as detailed as a survey, but uh, it certainly gives us clear guidance in interpreting the zoning bylaw. It's, uh, it, you know, with any of our um, uh, properties that contain multiple zones, uh, there, there is a need to, for interpretation of that map uh, when things come close to the, uh, the boundaries of that zone. Uh, generally, we'll err on the side of caution and making a determination as to a, as to a zone boundary. Okay. And the second question would be, so with that 4.25 acres and the method by how we're reached or that we're, they're asking for storage units, but actually if they didn't want to do the storage units tomorrow, they could, uh, they could build a hotel, they could build a motel, they could put in offices, they could do, there's a, there's a lot of uses within the whole, within the highway commercial. So really by, by not just giving them um, an added use. What we're saying is that by going to the highway commercial zoning, is that we're we're opening it up to all kinds of uses. Correct. Yes. So uh, you know, with as with any zone, uh, once you put that zone in place, there is a range of potential activities uh, associated with that use. Uh, generally, my experience is, is once a site is improved to the standards that's required for commercial development, in this case, to support the kind of loads and traffic uh, that would be coming in and out with uh, outdoor storage, uh, you're to, you know we've created a commercial property and. Uh, and uh, and that is generally suitable for uh, you know commercial uses once developed. So once again, I guess my question is why why wouldn't we just go to an added use and then we don't have to worry about the you know the other the other part of like why why would we not just they they're not asking for anything more than storage units why would we not go to just an added use? 
Uh, well, it's it's the applicant's right to make the application that, that, that they wish. Uh, we we did consult with them in advance. Uh, you know, this would generally be my recommendation recommendation without uh, exceptional circumstances. Site specific uh, zoning tends to be quite cumbersome and not to reflect the actual development of a property. Uh, uh, so, you know, I'd say that once a develop a property is developed for commercial use, it's uh, uh, but it's a bit it's very burdensome to then uh, come encumber it with a site specific uh, 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 zoning amendment that's very restrictive of future uses of the property unless we unless we want to get into the business of approving every change in use of properties in the city um, so the purpose is this zone allows for commercial development along major roads that serves the traveling public and often requires large land areas for development. So you're that you're in favor of that statement covers this application. Yeah, that's my opinion. Uh, you know, I addressed uh, I addressed the highway moniker in the uh, in the zoning name uh, and how it's been applied throughout the city in my report. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's move to let's go to Robert. I don't have any questions with regards to this application, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, let's go to John McDougall. I don't have any questions, Mr. Chair. Okay, John Barr. A couple items. Um, Beth, you mentioned a commercial development further north. You called it a large industrial business. Can you identify what it is? Uh, Naniska's owns uh, the lime, I believe it's the limestone quarry or uh, type of quarry that's, yeah. So they okay. have larger trucks that travel <clears throat> East Mellick Road full of gravel and another rock. Uh, Kevin, if I wanted to, if I wanted to zone my property for a commercial storage facility, the only zone I could do is highly commercial. I can't do any other zone, correct? Yeah. Yeah, for uh, yeah, for the type of store for indoor and outdoor storage uh, of that nature, yes, that's the required zone. Okay, uh, back to Beth. Um, these the, these storage facility, this storage facility, it's not operating twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. It's up. I assume it's going to have hours of operation. I can't go in there at yeah. two in the morning. Can I? Yeah, the business owner has intentions on putting a limit on the times that individuals can ar can arrive on and off the property. Actually, it's good. Go ahead, Kevin. Sorry. Go ahead, Kevin. Actually, sorry, I, I should uh, I, I would just want to correct my previous comment. Uh, that is only commercial zone that supports it. Industrial zones also support that storage, uh, though. That's not my. That certainly wouldn't be my recommended zone in this in this area. Thank you. Um, what was I at? Oh, okay, hours. Um, the way you have it, it set out on the um, on the lot here, uh, from what I remember, there's there's uh, a f substantial shielding around where those buildings are going. Is that correct? Tree cover shielding? Beth, I think that's aimed at you. Beth? I think Beth is frozen. Oh no. Okay. Sorry, I believe the meeting just froze. I did not hear the question. Okay, the question is where, where are you uh, looking at uh, figure two in Kevin's uh, report here? Where you, where you have the buildings located? There's a, a fair amount of tree shielding around the buildings, correct? Or you could have a fair amount of tree shielding. Yeah, absolutely. The, the trees um, are actually currently covering the entire site really and then there's a few areas that are cleared uh, so the intention would be to increase that clearing a little bit more but what i'm asking is is it possible to shield the buildings from the road with trees the, the goal is there will be no buildings visible from east Mellick road there wouldn't even really other than a sign you wouldn't even know there's a business back there okay and it's completely dry you don't uh, for sewage disposal facilities or drinking water or anything like that? No. All right. Um, one last question. There's a, when I looked at the zoning maps, there was a piece there that's zoned R1, a little, little piece along the road. Is, is that correct, Kevin? 
Is that this? I'm not too sure uh, about the R1. It, it sorry, I was muted, sorry, I was muted there. Uh, so, uh, no, there isn't uh, a R1 zoning along uh, along East Valley. There's rural residential further north. When I looked at the GIS map for the zoning, the, the city map, uh, there seems to me there was a little R1 piece in there, probably where the house, where the uh, owner's home is. Okay, that, that's, that's not showing up on my mapping. <laughs> Uh, let okay, just... well, let's leave it. It's not, it's not relevant anyhow. I, I, I was just asking where that was going to sit uh, against the portion that wants to be rezoned. I have no other questions. Thanks. That's okay. Uh, Ray Pearson. Yeah, uh, to you, Kevin. Uh, further to Wayne's comments, can, can you clarify for us uh, why we wouldn't be asking for a survey, given that we're basically creating a commercial lot out there that who knows what could happen to it five years from now or whatever? I guess, I guess the, the answer is we're not severing or creating a, a new parcel. This is uh, just uh, uh, the zone. So, uh, you know, if at some point they wish to sever this uh, commercial uh, operation from the rest of the property, then uh, they would go through the consent uh, process and, uh, and, uh, and survey out the property. But uh, uh, just, it, it, it's not, common practice to survey out properties uh, just when uh, th there's a zoning amendment being applied to a portion of the property. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Oh, go ahead, John McDougall. Just a quick question. I just looking at the material that was supplied on our SharePoint site, is there just the two um, like communications from the public? regarding this application. Can you speak to that, Melissa? You should receive a P received a PDF that's dated July 14 and a PDF dated July 16. The July 16 PDF should include three public comments, four pages of a PDF with three public comments. Okay, so that was a sep that, so those aren't attached to the SharePoint yet? No, those are attached to SharePoint. Oh, okay, all right, I saw everything that was on SharePoint, like there's two two files. Correct. Okay. All right. Just just checking that. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Any other questions? Let's go to discussion. John Bart. Sorry. Um, I I just want to say I, I know Kevin mentioned other highly commercial zones. There's. Uh, um, but there's one on, on Red Oak Road, east of Carleton Road. There's also one on Rabbit Lake Road, which borders R1, an R1 zone on the, be on the uh, east and across Rabbit Lake Road uh, on the west end of Rabbit Lake Road. So it's not uncommon to see highway commercial zones on, on, on back road, especially like the one on Anderson Road. Um, if there's proper shielding and, and the building doesn't go up three, four stories. I, I assume there's gonna be no overnight lighting or anything like that. I, I see that it's pretty, a pretty benign use of the land and uh, I would support the rezoning for those reasons. Um, John McDougall. I don't have anything to, uh, to add or discuss right now. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Okay, Bev. Um, you know, driving out there, I'm not used to, you know, the, the country roads, so I'm kind of hanging on, but the traffic is, they're all, I guess they're used to it, so they're all over the place, but I, I'm just thinking if these people are out there with their boats and motors or whatever else, it, it could cause a problem, I suppose, for the traffic. Uh, it might be a little dangerous. I don't know if the signage or whatever would help, but that would be, that would be a concern for me, just the, the extra traffic. So I understand uh, you know, these four letters, I understand what they're saying. I, I would be concerned as well. Thank you. Robert. Thanks, Mr. Chair. The only thing I had wanted to add is that under the definitions uh, section of the zoning bylaw, it does 
talk about uh, commercial storage facilities that does not allow you to store hazardous materials in that. So I think that's valid information for those that have concerns about is this going to be a hazardous waste dump or something like that? I remember, I recall seeing those in some of the comments. So uh, just in the definition itself doesn't really permit that. Uh, that's really all I have for discussion, Mr. Chair, on that. Okay. Uh, Tannis. Um, no further discussion. I think uh, I could echo some of the points there. Um, I, I, I can see the safety concerns, but I think there's stuff you can mitigate, um, like Beth said, signage, um, awareness on speed limits, that type of thing. Um, nice to see um, some extra storage getting put into place. Okay, thank you. Ray? Nothing further to add, Mr. Chair. Okay, so, and again, my comment will just be that 4.25 acres of highway commercial with the uses that are allowed, um, in my mind, don't fit into the neighborhood. And again, I would be willing to support uh, if that's, if they wanted to do the storage units under an added use, um, I, I can understand that, but I'm, I'm very nervous of the highway commercial and the uses within the highway commercial. They, they can decide tomorrow not to do this. If, we, if this was, and remember, this is a recommendation, but if this was approved, as soon as it's approved, they can go ahead and put it out there as many other things. And they'd be back asking to sever 4.25 acres of highway commercial land. So again, I I would I think that that 4.25 acres should be, it should be seen as added use. Then they've got their storage units. It'll it'll keep the neighborhood relatively happy, and they won't have to deal with this down the road when when somebody wants to uh, do a light industrial use or um, a retail store or a service and repair shop. Like again. Um, I, I think that better control is to do the added use and then basically we, we know what they're up to. That's all they've asked for instead of a complete reason. Okay, um, any other discussion? Go ahead, Bev. Uh, can, we, can we ask the registered owners right now if there are they there that we can ask them if that would be a consideration? Um, well, uh, like you're suggesting that I'm, I'm suggesting maybe they don't know that's an option is that did you want to ask the registered owner if that would be something they would be interested in rather than going highway commercial well i guess i guess well how i'm going to answer that question is that they came to the city of kenora to with what they wanted and they were told that they were to do a rezone that they would need a highway commercial zone okay i don't think they were offered that i see okay Kevin, do you want to answer that? Uh, yeah, we, we had a, a, a conversation with uh, Beth prior to the application. Uh, we uh, considered uh, at least a couple of different options for proceeding forward. Uh, uh, certainly, um, uh, Ms. Green was free to make whatever application uh, she chose at the end of the day. Uh, uh, given what was being planned for the site, my recommendation was uh, amendment to uh, uh, highway commercial zone, uh, you know, in terms of the charting a course forward, I think this is the best course for uh, developing a commercial site. Bev, does that answer your question? Uh, yep, I was just trying to support you with your uh, with your uh, issue there, Wayne. That's fine. If that's what they're happy with, we're good. Thank you. Tannis? I think that circles back to my first question, Kevin. Um, even if we give them the commercial zone, there's still further controls on site approval of what can and cannot go on that commercial zone. There's, there's, there's the use of status. But they're still subject to site plan? That's a, That was my question at the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah, and then they are. So basically my understanding that if somebody wants to build a car wash, or if they wanted to build a car wash, and as long as they met the zoning bylaws, they'd be able to build a car wash. Correct, Kevin? 
Uh, yes, um, you know, there's, uh, there's the letter of the law and practicality. Uh, having been involved in site selection for businesses in the past, I can uh, assure you that a car wash is going to want uh, a good access to municipal water. Uh, and, uh, you know, and that falls into play with, uh, you know, the fact that the sheer fact that uh, uh, a range of highway commercial uses are permitted uh, doesn't mean that it's going to be practical to develop um, most of those most of those uses in a location like this. Uh, but uh, you know, certainly anything suitable that's adequately serviced by rural services is uh, with the, the, the something that could be considered in future redevelopment of the property. Okay. Any other questions or any other comments? Okay. Um, so we'll read the recommendation, Melissa, please. My apologies, bear with me. <laughs> okay, resolve that the planning advisory committee recommends that the council of the corporation of the city of Kenora approve zoning bylaw amendment file number D14-2106 to change the zoning of 4.25 hectares of property located at 865 East Mellick Road from RU Rural Zone to HC Highway Commercial Zone. The effect of the zoning bylaw amendment is to support the development of indoor and outdoor storage. The policies of the Kenora official plan support small commercial development that be, meets the needs of the rural community, provided that is compatible with the existing land uses. The committee has made an evaluation of the application upon its merits against the official plan, zoning bylaw, and the provincial policy statement 2020, and provides a recommendation to council purely based on these matters, whereas the committee may have not had the opportunity to hear public comments in full. So the recommendation did, so I just want to make sure how you read the part of the use. How did you read the part of the use specific to what the, what they, um, what they've asked for? So the, the amendment, are you asking what the amendment is or the second paragraph? The effect of the zoning bylaw amendment is to support the development of indoor and outdoor storage. Was that your question, Mr. Chair? Um, so I, I, to support that or to support the zoning to highway commercial? Yeah, so in the first paragraph, we've asked purely just to rezone from RU Rural Zone to HC Highway Commercial Zone. So this is not a site-specific zone provision. It's merely just a request to change from RU to HC. Okay. Okay. So then just read the second paragraph again, please. The effect of the zoning bylaw amendment is to support the development of indoor and outdoor storage. The policies of the Kenora official plan support small commercial development that meets the needs of the rural community, provided that is compatible with ex existing land uses. Okay, thank you. Okay, we need somebody to put the motion forward. Uh, John Barr. You're muted, John. You're still muted. Not now, I hope. Uh, that the Planning Advisory Committee makes a recommendation to the Council of the Corporation of the City of Kenora to approve a zoning bylaw amendment, file number D14-21-06, to change the zoning of 4.25 hectares of property located at 865 East Mallet Road from RU Rural Zone to HC Highway Commercial Zone. Seconder. Uh, okay, Tannis. Any further discussion? All in favor? So that is carried. I could just um, take a recorded vote here for the recommendation. Keep your hand. Ev Richards, you were a yay. Wayne Gold, nay. Robert Kotowski, yay. yay. Ray Pearson, yay. John Barr, yay. John McDougall, yay. And Thomas McIntosh, yay. So that is a carried vote. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. That is, we are up to new business. Oh, Melissa, I, you don't have to, yeah, there's no more. 
Um, we'll just move on with new business. Uh, official plan and zoning bylaw review. Uh, yeah, there's uh, no updates at, at this point. We continue to work with the consultants on the, on the forthcoming official plan and uh, we're hoping, uh, I'm sorry if this sounds a bit repetitive, but we, uh, we're, we're, we're a lot closer than I think we were last month. So uh, uh, I, I, I just uh, hold it, <laughs> it just uh, keep, a, keep an eye peeled. You'll be seeing, seeing something soon, we hope. All right. Okay, that's it. Anybody else have anything? Bev? I, I have a question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Over here in Norman, we have uh, in the bay, we have the change of latitude. We did the the um, the docking for Bruce Carwacki, and then we've got Chia's property over there. And then to the west, I see we have a great big sign up that says Marina. And they're selling gas there, and they've got their their docking and that. And I'm just wondering, how come we don't know anything about it? How did they how did they put a marina in there, and we don't know about it? So uh, that uh, so that's uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's operating under the Green Adventures moniker, but the, that's Scott Green, who is the proponent in that case. Uh, so they went through site plan control approval with the city of Kenora, and uh, it is a permitted use in the zone in question. Oh, okay. So then that doesn't have to come to, to our, to our committee. It just goes through your site plan control. Yeah, it okay. went through site plan control. There's a few other approvals, uh, you know, with something okay. like that. And there's a few other levels of government involved, but uh, uh, okay. everything I'm, I'm happy to say that that particular property on Norman Bay is entirely uh, uh, operating within approvals that I'm aware of. Okay. That's good. I just, I walk down there all the time and, I, and there's this great big sign one day and I thought, well, wh where'd that come from? But there was also um, a lot of, I don't know, slick, is that what you call it? Some, something all along the water by the subway there. And I thought, well, okay, here, you know, who do I phone? But that's the only place that there was any of that, like over by car wackies and whatever the water was clean. But I just wondered because it seems to be there's things that we get and other things that we don't get. And to me, it seems like it's important, but I know you got control of everything, but I just, I just have to wonder sometimes, you know, what we do. That's all. Thank you, Kevin. Good job, you guys. <laughs> Tough Anything night. Else? Anybody else? I'm good. All good. John, you want to close the meeting? Yeah, move to close. We're all done. Thank you. Five hours of uh, conversation. Ready? Great. See you later. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.